their first European Championship final and first major final of any note since the 1966 World Cup. Gary Southgate has made one change from the side that thrashed Ukraine in the quarterfinals. Bukayo Saka replaces Jadon Sancho. For Denmark, they've had a roller coaster tournament so far with the collapse of Christian Eriksen in their very first group game. They're looking to draw on the spirit of Euro 92 as well when they were crowned champions. They're unchanged from the victory over the Czech Republic. Kickoff in this one is at 8 p.m. England and Denmark will meet in the second semi final at Euro 2020 this evening. The winner, of course, will go on to face Italy in the showpiece. A match England bidding to reach their first European Championship final and first major final of any note since the 1966 World Cup. Gary Southgate has made one change from the side that thrashed Ukraine in the quarterfinals. Bukayo Saka replaces Jadon Sancho. For Denmark, they've had a roller coaster tournament so far with the collapse of Christian Eriksen in their very first group game. They're looking to draw on the spirit of Euro 92 as well when they were crowned champions. They're unchanged from the victory over the Czech Republic. Kickoff in this one is at 8 p.m. England and Denmark will meet in the second semi final at Euro 2020 this evening. The winner, of course, will go on to face Italy in the showpiece. A match England bidding to reach their first European Championship final and first major final of any note since the 1966 World Cup. Gary Southgate has made one change from the side that thrashed Ukraine in the quarterfinals. Bukayo Saka replaces Jadon Sancho. For Denmark, they've had a roller coaster tournament so far with the collapse of Christian Eriksen in their very first group game. They're looking to draw on the spirit of Euro 92 as well when they were crowned champions. They're unchanged from the victory over the Czech Republic. Kickoff in this one is at 8 p.m. England and Denmark will meet in the second semi final at Euro 2020 this evening. The winner, of course, will go on to face Italy in the showpiece. A match England bidding to reach their first European Championship final and first major final of any note since the 1966 World Cup. Gary Southgate has made one change from the side that thrashed Ukraine in the quarterfinals. Bukayo Saka replaces Jadon Sancho. For Denmark, they've had a roller coaster tournament so far with the collapse of Christian Eriksen in their very first group game. They're looking to draw on the spirit of Euro 92 as well when they were crowned champions. They're unchanged from the victory over the Czech Republic. Kickoff in this one is at 8 p.m. England and Denmark will meet in the second semi final at Euro 2020 this evening. The winner, of course, will go on to face Italy in the showpiece. And for Denmark, they've had a roller coaster tournament so far with the collapse of Christian Eriksen in their very first group game. They're looking to draw on the spirit of Euro 92 as well when they were crowned champions. They're unchanged from the victory over the Czech Republic. Kickoff in this one is at 8 p.m. England and Denmark will meet in the second semi final at Euro 2020 this evening. The winner, of course, will go on to face Italy in the showpiece. A match England bidding to reach their first European Championship final and first major final of any note since the 1966 World Cup. Gary Southgate has made one change from the side that thrashed Ukraine in the quarterfinals. Bukayo Saka replaces Jadon Sancho. For Denmark, they've had a roller coaster tournament so far with the collapse of Christian Eriksen in their very first group game. They're looking to draw on the spirit of Euro 92 as well when they were crowned champions. They're unchanged from the victory over the Czech Republic. Kickoff in this one is at 8 p.m. England and Denmark will meet in the second semi final at Euro 2020 this evening. The winner, of course, will go on to face Italy in the showpiece. A match England bidding to reach their first European Championship final and first major final of any note since the 1966 World Cup. Gary Southgate has made one change from the side that thrashed Ukraine in the quarterfinals. Bukayo Saka replaces Jadon Sancho. For Denmark, they've had a roller coaster tournament so far with the collapse of Christian Eriksen in their very first group game. They're looking to draw on the spirit of Euro 92 as well when they were crowned champions. They're unchanged from the victory over the Czech Republic. Kickoff in this one is at 8 p.m. 
England and Denmark will meet in the second semi-final at Euro 2020 this evening. The winner, of course, will go on to face Italy in the showpiece. A match England bidding to reach their first European Championship final and first major final of any note since the 1966 World Cup. Gary Southgate has made one change from the side that thrashed Ukraine in the quarterfinals. Bakayo Saka replaces Jadon Sancho. For Denmark, they've had a roller coaster tournament so far with the collapse of Christian Eriksen in their very first group game. They're looking to draw on the spirit of Euro 92 as well when they were crowned champions. They're unchanged from the victory over the Czech Republic. Kickoff in this one is at 8 p.m. England and Denmark will meet in the second semi final at Euro 2020 this evening. The winner, of course, will go on to face Italy in the showpiece. A match England bidding to reach their first European Championship final and first major final of any note since the 1966 World Cup. Gary Southgate has made one change from the side that thrashed Ukraine in the quarterfinals. Bakayo Saka replaces Jadon Sancho. For Denmark, they've had a roller coaster tournament so far with the collapse of Christian Eriksen in their very first group game. They're looking to draw on the spirit of Euro 92 as well when they were crowned champions. They're unchanged from the victory over the Czech Republic. Kickoff in this one is at 8 p.m. England and Denmark will meet in the second semi final at Euro 2020 this evening. The winner, of course, will go on to face Italy in the showpiece. A match England bidding to reach their first European Championship final and first major final of any note since the 1966 World Cup. Gary Southgate has made one change from the side that thrashed Ukraine in the quarterfinals. Bakayo Saka replaces Jadon Sancho. For Denmark, they've had a roller coaster tournament so far with the collapse of Christian Eriksen in their very first group game. They're looking to draw on the spirit of Euro 92 as well when they were crowned champions. They're unchanged from the victory over the Czech Republic. Kickoff in this one is at 8 p.m. England and Denmark will meet in the second semi final at Euro 2020 this evening. The winner, of course, will go on to face Italy in the showpiece. A match England bidding to reach their first European Championship final and first major final of any note since the 1966 World Cup. Gary Southgate has made one change from the side that thrashed Ukraine in the quarterfinals. Bakayo Saka replaces Jadon Sancho. For Denmark, they've had a roller coaster tournament so far with the collapse of Christian Eriksen in their very first group game. They're looking to draw on the spirit of Euro 92 as well when they were crowned champions. They're unchanged from the victory over the Czech Republic. Kickoff in this one is at 8 p.m. England and Denmark will meet in the second semi final at Euro 2020 this evening. The winner, of course, will go on to face Italy in the showpiece. A match England bidding to reach their first European Championship final and first major final of any note since the 1966 World Cup. Gary Southgate has made one change from the side that thrashed Ukraine in the quarterfinals. Bakayo Saka replaces Jadon Sancho. For Denmark, they've had a roller coaster tournament so far with the collapse of Christian Eriksen in their very first group game. They're looking to draw on the spirit of Euro 92 as well when they were crowned champions. They're unchanged from the victory over the Czech Republic. Kickoff in this one is at 8 p.m. England and Denmark will meet in the second semi final at Euro 2020 this evening. The winner, of course, will go on to face Italy in the showpiece. A match England bidding to reach their first European Championship final and first major final of any note since the 1966 World Cup. Gary Southgate has made one change from the side that thrashed Ukraine in the quarterfinals. Bakayo Saka replaces Jadon Sancho. For Denmark, they've had a roller coaster tournament so far with the collapse of Christian Eriksen in their very first group game. They're looking to draw on the spirit of Euro 92 as well when they were crowned champions. They're unchanged from the victory over the Czech Republic. Kickoff in this one is at 8 p.m. England and Denmark will meet in the second semi final at Euro 2020 this evening. The winner, of course, will go on to face Italy in the showpiece. A match England bidding to reach their first European Championship final and first major final of any note since the 1966 World Cup. Gary Southgate has made one change from the side that thrashed Ukraine in the quarterfinals. Bakayo Saka replaces Jadon Sancho. For Denmark, they've had a roller coaster tournament so far with the collapse of Christian Eriksen in their very first group game. They're looking to draw on the spirit of Euro 92 as well when they were crowned champions. They're unchanged 
from the victory over the Czech Republic. Kickoff in this one is at 8 p.m. England and Denmark will meet in the second semi final at Euro 2020 this evening. The winner, of course, will go on to face Italy in the showpiece. A match England bidding to reach their first European Championship final and first major final of any note since the 1966 World Cup. Gary Southgate has made one change from the side that thrashed Ukraine in the quarterfinals. Bakayo Saka replaces Jaden Sancho. For Denmark, they've had a roller coaster tournament so far with the collapse of Christian Eriksen in their very first group game. They're looking to draw on the spirit of Euro 92 as well when they were crowned champions. They're unchanged from the victory over the Czech Republic. Kickoff in this one is at 8pm. England and Denmark will meet in the second semi-final at Euro 2020 this evening. The winner, of course, will go on to face Italy in the showpiece. A match England bidding to reach their first European Championship final and first major final of any note since the 1966 World Cup. Gary Southgate has made one change from the side that thrashed Ukraine in the quarterfinals. Bakayo Saka replaces Jadon Sancho. For Denmark, they've had a roller coaster tournament so far with the collapse of Christian Eriksen in their very first group game. They're looking to draw on the spirit of Euro 92 as well when they were crowned champions. They're unchanged from the victory over the Czech Republic. Kickoff in this one is at 8pm. England and Denmark will meet in the second semi-final at Euro 2020 this evening. The winner, of course, will go on to face Italy in the showpiece. A match England bidding to reach their first European Championship final and first major final of any note since the 1966 World Cup. Gary Southgate has made one change from the side that thrashed Ukraine in the quarterfinals. Bakayo Saka replaces Jadon Sancho. For Denmark, they've had a roller coaster tournament so far with the collapse of Christian Eriksen in their very first group game. They're looking to draw on the spirit of Euro 92 as well when they were crowned champions. They're unchanged from the victory over the Czech Republic. Kickoff in this one is at 8 p.m. England and Denmark will meet in the second semi final at Euro 2020 this evening. The winner, of course, will go on to face Italy in the showpiece. A match England bidding to reach their first European Championship final and first major final of any note since the 1966 World Cup. Gary Southgate has made one change from the side that thrashed Ukraine in the quarterfinals. Bakayo Saka replaces Jadon Sancho. For Denmark, they've had a roller coaster tournament so far with the collapse of Christian Eriksen in their very first group game. They're looking to draw on the spirit of Euro 92 as well when they were crowned champions. They're unchanged from the victory over the Czech Republic. Kickoff in this one is at 8 p.m. Right, and it's a very warm welcome along to this huge match taking place at Wembley Stadium. We're bringing you independent off-tube studio commentary of the second Euro 2020 semi-final between England and Denmark. Myself, Tom McGarry and Jack Ogilby talking you through the match. The winners of this game, whether that's in 90 minutes extra time or even penalties, will go on to face Italy in the final this weekend. England bidding to reach their first ever European Championship final, their first major final of any note since the 1966 World Cup. And Denmark, Euro 92 winners, looking to get back to the final after a 29-year absence. The match has just got underway. England in their usual traditional white colours, going from right to left in the first half. Denmark in all red. We've got the first free kick of the evening as well. So... A huge, huge night for both of these nations, for England. Jack, can they make it through to their, their first European Championship final in history? Well, we'll have to see. I thought it was a fabulous game last night between Italy and Spain. If we have half that excitement. I think we'll have a really good game. I have to say, Thomas Delaney may be lucky not to get a yellow card so early on there. Clear trip on Raheem Sterling when he was away. I think Thomas Delaney's a big player for Denmark though, tonight. He sets the tempo, keeps everyone calm in the middle of the park. I imagine it's going to be a quite frantic start and they then maybe calm down. But, oh, it's going to be a great game, Tom. I certainly hope it will be. We've just seen another foul. This time, England's Calvin Phillips going through Pierre-Emil Hoiberg. So, I think... To Inside. balance it up, I think Philip should have got a yeah, card I, I, there as well. I think we could safely say both <laughs> teams are up for this, this yes. game. Then there's no holding back. There's no feeling each other out in these opening exchanges. Uh, team news, if you did miss it 
in the build-up to kick off. England one change. Bakaya Saka is fit and back in the starting eleven, replacing Jaden Sancho for Denmark. Unchanged from the quarter-final victory over the Czech Republic as Raheem Sterling trying to make inroads down the left-hand side for England. He's robbed of possession and Denmark can now look to bring the ball forward, although Strigger Larsson on the right-hand side looked like he'd been robbed of possession there, but he is going to get the free kick from the referee, who you pointed out to me, Jack. It's a good omen if you're a supporter of England. It's the same official, Danny McKayley, of the Netherlands that was in charge of the victory over Germany in the last 16. Yes, it was a good call that as well, wasn't it? It was a foul by Luke Shaw on Strigger Larsson, the right-back or right-wing-back for uh, the Danes. Uh, Luke Shaw, big night for him, isn't it? Uh, didn't start the tournament, played ever so well, I thought, against the Ukraine on Saturday. It's amazing, his form's been so good, but there are still question marks, aren't they? Can he answer those uh, doubters, Tom? Yeah, as England have possession of the ball with Shaw, breaking forward down the left-hand side. He's allowed to carry it towards the edge of the penalty area, tries to feed it into Mason Mount, and then there's a, a back pass, surely, to Kasper Schmeichel, who picks it up with his hands under pressure from a couple of England players. Mason Mount is leading the appeals. I mean, first glance there, Jack, to me, it looked like the, the Danish player helped it back to... Uh, Schmeichel and it probably should have been given as an indirect free kick in the penalty area. Yeah, and he would, would have been three or four yards out as well. It was one that some of the Danish uh, defenders seemed to stop and the body language, language usually gives it away, doesn't it? Everyone seemed to stop. The referee, though, Danny McKayley, thought it was a, a, a legitimate tackle, I suppose, and the, the goalkeeper was right to pick it up. Yeah, you don't often see those decisions given, those indirect free kicks inside the penalty area, and Danny McKayley opted not to do so there when perhaps he should have done as... Andreas Christensen brings the ball forward for Denmark, finds Thomas Delaney and now Pierre-Emile Hoiberg of Tottenham Hotspur. Denmark playing with their usual 3-4-3 formation that has served them well throughout the tournament so far. Kasper Schmeichel, the ever-present in goal, sweeping the ball out to the right-hand side. It's flicked on by Strigger Larsson. Braffway will give chase, but Maguire gets there first for England. Rice then slides a good incisive ball forward to Mason Mount, who has his pocket picked by Hoiberg, but it will be an England throw-in down the left-hand side. Three and a half minutes on the clock. England nil, Denmark nil. Game not yet to settle down, which I suppose, given the occasion, is no surprise. Yeah, well, you always fear these games are going to be quite cagey, don't you? But this is starting off at a really nice pace. We've had a bit of controversy with that potential back pass. As well to Schmeichel. I think we're going to see a lot of this in this game, actually, Tom. England dominating possession round about the halfway line. Denmark happy to let them play in front of them. Yeah, Shaw plays the ball down the left-hand channel to Raheem Sterling. Most of England's play in these opening minutes has come down their left-hand side. Christensen gets a toe in there to stop Sterling in his tracks. But England can keep the pressure on with a throw in deep inside Denmark territory. Shaw is the man that will take it. He goes down the line to Mason Mount, who... Finds Raheem Sterling. Falls back away from the penalty area. Sterling by Strigger Larsson. England retain possession, though. Rice works it infield towards John Stones on the halfway line. Stones really being closed down. Kasper Dolberg is the man leading the line for Denmark once again this evening. Three goals during the knockout stages so far for him since he really came into the team for the last 16 clash with Wales because of an injury to Yusuf Poulsen, who hasn't been able to Secure his place back in the starting 11 as Joachim Mailer for Denmark, one of their star men during the tournament, flicks the ball forward to Delaney, who tried to help it on to Dolberg, couldn't quite find the forward, and now England might have space to work in down the right-hand side. Early cross from Harry Kane is a really good ball as well from the right-hand side by the England captain, looking for Raheem Sterling, his only option really in the penalty area. And he wasn't too far away from finding him. No, good ball wide by Phillips, wasn't it? Saka stepped over it, whips a good low ball in, doesn't he, from the right-hand side there. Kane and Sterling, he knows it as well. As soon as he sets off, he knows he's going to be half a yard short. He looks to the skies in frustration, but good direct football there from England. Yeah, I wonder if Raheem Sterling could have thrown himself at that, but then that would have immediately brought back memories of Euro 96 with Alan Shearer's cross to Paul Gascoigne in extra time against Germany when Gaza was inches away from making contact with the ball and scoring what would have, would have been a, a winning golden goal for England that day as Denmark now look to come forward really for the first time in these opening six minutes it's Strigger Larsson down the right hand side finds Hoiberg England press the Danes back towards the halfway line Simon Kjær the Danish captain finds Vestergaard and now the ball is moved forward by Andreas Christensen 
via Delaney to Strugger Larson on the right hand side and as I say just over six minutes played probably the first little period of possession that Denmark have had yeah maybe something they need as well just get the foot on the ball take those early nerves out of the game as well Christensen striding forward here too easy stretches it to Mailer. that's not a great ball though by Christensen who's had a great tournament since coming into the game Champions League winner of course and you mentioned Mailer earlier it's kind of been the, the tournament the right footy left back Spinazzola has been so good for Italy and he's been very very good I found yeah I mean left backs really in general I suppose if you were picking a, a team of the tournament left back would you have Mailer would you have Spinazzola or would you have Luke Shaw who's done so well as well yeah well he's uh, spoiled for choice he's not Ronaldo the uh, the position you're looking for is it he's spoiled for choice for really Harry Maguire bringing the ball forward for England he's Allowed to carry that a good 40 50 yards. He finds Sterling on the left hand side, who's taken on Strigger Larson, gets to the byline. Good cross towards Saka. Vestergaard was always going to beat him in the air and heads clear, only as far as Shaw on the left hand side. Low cross finds Saka, who tries to unselfishly lay it off to Kane. Delaney was aware of that and is able to temporarily stab the ball clear. But England have made the faster start of these two sides and are dominating the early possession. John Stones has it inside the centre circle. Exchanges passes with his Manchester City colleague Kyle Walker. Harry Kane dropping deep as well to get a touch. Gives it back to John Stones once again. Denmark notably sitting very deep and nullifying the space for England to play in. And that forces Stones into trying to thread a pass through a, a gap that wasn't there. And now Denmark have won the ball back and could spring a counter-attack with Mailer down the left-hand side. Up against Kyle Walker who stands his ground really well. Mailer won't have come up against a, a fullback as quick as Kyle Walker in this tournament. And the England man there has done well as they can now bring it forward, England, with Harry Kane. But that, that is going to be an intriguing battle, really, between those two, Mailer and, and Walker. Yeah, it's strange, really, from a defensive point of view as well, because one's right back, one's a, a left wing back. Do you go or do you give yourself a bit of extra time? Do you defend? It's all those kind of things. It's a, a real... I suppose when you play a three against a four, it does uh, spring up a different tactical element to it. Yeah, one of the reasons uh, it's been debated that Bikaya Saka's come back into the team on that right-hand side of the forward three for England is because of his defensive capabilities. He's used to playing wing-back himself, and with Mailer being such a pivotal figure in the, in the Danish attacking play, Saka's the one who can come back and help out Kyle Walker if need be. Yeah, it's an interesting point. I maybe would have gone with Jaden Sancho just because he's got that extra space. Ball through the middle. Here you go, Tom. Yeah, lovely ball over the top and there might be an opportunity for Damsgaard but there's that pace of Walker once again coming to England's rescue. It was really neat. Link-up play down the right-hand side. One-touch passing uh, from Denmark. It was Strigger Larsen who played the ball over the top. Damsgaard is fast. He had a head start on Walker but Kyle Walker, I don't think there's really a faster player in the tournament than him it was so neat you wonder if it's a set move that's something they've worked on there it was really nice play Dahlberg dropping deep playing it off ball over the top was a good one Damsgaard it, oh, just, it was under his feet wasn't he just couldn't quite sort them out and well played by Carl Walker opening exchanges at Wembley still England nil Denmark nil in this Euro 2020 semi-final England the home side at Wembley have made the strongest start of the two dominating possession and territory haven't really created any chances as of yet there's been nothing really to do for the two goalkeepers Kasper Schmeichel and Jordan Pickford Denmark just had their first attack around about on the nine minute mark and it almost led to an opportunity for Damsgaard through the middle after neat play down the right hand side uh, Strigel Larsen was integral to that but the pace of Kyle Walker was able to bail England out so England leading on points at the moment but still early exchanges in this semi-final England nil Denmark nil Luke Shaw on the near side uh, as we look in our TV pitches in the penalty studio commentary of course Everton, uh, Everton England going right to left in their usual white shirts navy shorts and white socks all red for uh, Denmark this evening John Stones now heads towards the centre circle Denmark happy to go back into that 3-4-3 shape and camp out on the edge of the box as much although they seem to want John Stones to have the ball and spring as soon as Harry Maguire gets it Maybe the field might be a weakness there as Mason Mount picks up the right hand side, 40 yards from the Danes goal. Delaney presses him. Walker, Rice, Phillips can turn into the feet of Mount now. He's got Saka to his right hand side. Miscontrols but finds Saka just about. Mount and Saka again. Luke Shaw's in acres of space once on the left hand side. Nice triangle though. 
Low cross in by Mounts, not the best. Sammy Kier just about gets away. Thomas Delaney wins the seconds. Up in the air by Phillips, but Mount of space on the edge of the box. On the right hand side, Mailer makes life difficult for him. Saka, Mount into the box. Can he get the ball in? Deflects. Toe pokes it as much as anything onto the shins of Vestergaard. Out for a corner kick. Good play by Mount. Not exactly off the training ground, but he kept going and got his reward. Yeah, they just about bundled their way through, didn't they, England? Good intention from Saka and Mount down the right hand side Mount's touch when he got into the penalty area though just a little bit too heavy it allowed Vestergaard to come across and divert the ball out of play for the first corner of the match for either side Mount is the man who's going to take it Maguire and Stones a forward from the back in line with Harry Kane just about on the penalty spot as Mount delivers the outswinger straight into the front post though easily dealt with and Denmark can bring the ball clear now with Mikel Damsgaard runs into Luke Shaw but it breaks to Delaney who looks to swing the ball out towards I think that was Strigger Larson actually in the left wing position temporarily England though pick up the loose ball Kane works it to Sterling left hand side he's into the penalty area he's onto his right foot Raheem Sterling and he gets a shot away but didn't quite catch it how he would like and it's a routine save straight down the throat of Kasper Schmeichel he's onto his right foot I think he's got a score there Tom honestly he does so so well Christensen I don't know what he's doing he just lets him come onto that right foot he cuts inside doesn't get the contact he wants comfortable save for Schmeichel but I the form Sterling's in at the moment, I fully expected that to the back of the net to bulge. Yeah, it reminds me of the goal Chiesa scored last night for Italy. Lorenzo Insigne scored a goal like that as well for the Italians, where they cut in from the left onto their right foot and curl it into that corner. I'm not sure if Sterling was trying to reverse it into the near post or, or just got caught in two minds, but he certainly didn't catch the ball uh, like Chiesa did certainly last night. Oh, wonderful goal, wasn't it, by uh, Chiesa. He's really come into this tournament and... Uh, yeah, I think every time we see someone cutting for the left-hand side and the right foot, we're going to picture that goal. Unfortunately, not that time for Sterling. Yes, Italy beating Spain on penalties last night after a 1-1 draw at Wembley. 4-2 on spot kicks it was for the Italians. First final for them since Euro 2012. As we mentioned at the top, England have never played in a European Championship final. Denmark have done so just once, beating Germany to claim a shock victory at Euro 92 as England in possession Kyle Walker with space on the right hand side he carries it up towards the halfway line finds Bakaya Saka and now Declan Rice was one of the players on a yellow card for England and walking a tightrope uh, during the quarterfinal match with Ukraine but yellow cards have been wiped now uh, for the semi-final so the only way any of these players can, can miss a potential final is if we're, they were to be directly sent off in this game John Stones finds Walker on the right-hand side. He puts an early ball towards the box. It's actually a good pass to Kane, who takes a one touch and then tries to swivel and hit with his right foot. That shows the, the confidence Harry Kane has been playing with during the knockout stages, but the effort never troubling the target. Yeah, three goals in his last two games uh, for Kane. Nicely carved ball, wasn't it, by Kyle Walker. Interesting, I have to say, Kane seems to be almost deliberately dropping deep at the moment. He's picking up those nice pockets of space on the edge of the box, obviously, Three on one's not great if you're a striker, is it? Against three physical centre for uh, centre halves like uh, Denmark have got. He's dropping deep. He found a nice pocket of space there. Good ball by Walker on the turn though. Always going to be leaning back and wasn't troubling the goalkeeper. Yeah, very difficult effort to try and get on target, but a sight for Harry Kane as all Phillips has had his pocket picked by Hoiberg. This might be a chance for Denmark. Hoiberg. Had options right and left, chose to go for goal himself. Not necessarily the wrong option. Oh, as Pickford from the resulting clearance has given the ball straight to Damsgaard. Dahlberg will now strike from the edge of the area. He drags it wide. And Jordan Pickford, who hasn't, of course, conceded a goal at these finals yet, holds his hand up in apology. Oh, well, we didn't quite see that. It all happened so quickly. He rolled it straight onto the back of Damsgaard's heels. It was pretty poor by Pickford. He's got a the first goalkeeper ever, the first player ever, isn't he, of course, not to uh, concede his first five uh, games at the Euros. That was really, really poor by Pickford. Unfortunately for him, Brathwaite's shot wasn't the best, but the last touch was a, uh, a Denmark once a corner kick. Yeah, must have just taken a faint nick there because it is a, a corner for Denmark, their first of the game, and they're crowding around Jordan Pickford's goal. Four or five red shirts right around Pickford. That's forcing England defenders to get in there as well. Just about half the outfield players, if not more, are grouped just about on Pickford's goal line. The delivery will be whipped in with the right foot, punched away by Pickford, who somehow is able to 
make his way through a wall of bodies. It comes back out to Strigger Larson, who took the corner. He's looking to try to work an angle for a cross, but he's held up well by Mason Mount, who then wins the free kick as well. Good work from Mount, and the brief period of pressure that Denmark were able to put on England there has come to an end. Yeah, really good play by Mason Mount. Interesting as well by the Danes, loading that. I'm not even going to say the six-yard box. It was on the goal line, wasn't it? It wasn't the best ball in by uh, Strigger Larson. Well played by Pickford, coming in punching away that's just seen it again it's good play by Mount it's uh, a lot of pushing and shoving if there had been a goal there's a lot for VAR to work out in there Tom there certainly is I'm still trying to work out how Jordan Pickford with about 20 players in the six yard box with him was able to to come through unopposed and punch that clear yeah it was quite a clear run as well I've seen it again he probably should have punched it further away but he, he did well yeah he got it out of the immediate danger and, and Mount did the rest England nil Denmark nil then in this Euro 2020 semi-final the second semi-final of course we've got 17 minutes on the clock a couple of sighters now for either side but nothing quite to get you towards the edge of your seat just yet although i'm sure people listening in are on the edge of the seat that just kind of goes with the territory of a, a major tournament semi-final as denmark pressing england back to their goalkeeper jordan pigford who's more effective with this clearance although it has gone straight out of play on the near touchline. So we are throwing to Denmark. Again, Pickford has his hand up in apologies. He's had a really good tournament so far. There were one or two nervy moments towards the end of the Ukraine game, a match that England had already comfortably won by that stage, but he's had one or two nervy moments at the start of this game as well. Yeah, he just needs to take his foot off the gas and play the, the game rather than the occasion, doesn't he? That's a foul on Hoiberg. Is it England players aren't too happy? Declan Rice, the guilty man but yeah it was strange against the Ukraine because there, there was no need to take the chance but it's almost like he couldn't help himself <laughs> yeah there was one where he came out and tried to half volley the ball away about 40 yards from his goal and he sliced it straight into the air as it's just getting a little bit stop start at the moment a few niggling free kicks going in it's probably actually helping Denmark feel their way into the game and this is an opportunity actually from the right hand side for Strigger Larsen to deliver a decent ball into the box Damsgaard has come across as well so there's two alternatives uh, for this free kick just five or ten yards or so inside the England half but as I mentioned a decent angle to try and uh, lift this towards the edge of the England penalty area Strigger Larson will do exactly that it's lofted in with far too much height though and I don't think anyone actually knew where the ball was eventually it's cleared by Kyle Walker over on the far side it's quite a strange free kick that really is Strigger Larson and gives away a foul for going through the back of Raheem Sterling. Yeah, it was so static that I thought there must have been an offside in the middle mm. of something. Everyone seemed to stop barring Kyle Walker. And I was surprised that he kept him, but it's been a real good territory gain. That is the long ball clear. I don't know what Strigger Larson's doing there. He's always going to foul uh, Sterling from behind. It kind of let England off the hook because Denmark have had a really good five minutes or so. Yeah, him himself, though, uh, Strigger Larson. Just a little bit uncomfortable over the last couple of minutes. One or two poor deliveries and giving away a couple of free kicks. But certainly... On the whole, Denmark are settling into this game. England, though, have possession. As I say, that Walker's ball in field was picked off by Damsgaard. Stones will gather, though, deep inside his own half, and he can carry unopposed forward. He finds Harry Maguire, scorer against the Ukraine, scored in back-to-back -back major championship quarterfinals. Now Maguire did so against Sweden at the World Cup in 2018. John Stone's got a couple of goals in that tournament as well. He finds Kyle Walker yet to score. An international goal. Finds it towards Calvin Phillips. England happy just to retain the ball. And it is notable, this has been a theme so far, that when England have possession, Denmark sit deep. But then when they decide to go, they all press high, as they've just done that. So there, first on John Stones, then on Mason Mount. And they were temporarily at least able to win the ball back. Yeah, it was a really good footing as well. I think it was by Delaney or maybe Mailer there. So Bakara Saka just like looked to, to get through. It's really stretched, isn't it? Declan Rice giving it away. And I think the way that the Danes are sitting deep and stretching the game is making it difficult for England because he can't play those nice short, sharp triangles. They're having to stretch the game themselves. And they just don't quite look comfortable at the moment. They don't. And we do have to give credit to Denmark in the way they are set up. They were swashbuckling against Wales. They had to dig in during the second half against the Czech Republic. And now they're providing some defensive resilience. But most importantly, probably from their point of view, offering a, a genuine threat on the counter-attack so far as Kier... Rolls the ball to Yannick Vestergaard of Southampton. Plays it forward to Damsgaard, who tried to let it run for Dolberg. Two forwards there weren't quite on the same wavelength, and 
Jordan Pickford's able to clear for England. Vestergaard will beat Kane in the air and send it back from where it came. That forces Walker to scamper, but he should be able to clear down the right-hand channel and up towards Harry Kane once again. Again, he can't quite win the duel with Vestergaard, and, and Simon Kier will pick the ball up once more. So probably opening 10 minutes, England-worthy better side settled the quicker, but game's got a, a more even feel to it now. Yeah, I think the, uh, the Danes are really settled now, and they've got a lot more control about the play. England just need to be a bit more sharper in certain things. They seem to be playing a lot down Vestergaard's channel in the air, he's six foot seven. He's going to win all of those, isn't he? He's just coming uh, straight back. Christensen, he looked nervous early on, made a mistake, gave a, a foul away. Uh, Sterling turned him inside out as well. Maybe they should be target him a bit more. Yeah, certainly for the aerial balls, you'd imagine they would get more joy out of the the Chelsea man who has had a a really good tournament. Actually, one of the tactical shifts that Casper Hulman, the Denmark manager, made in this tournament when he moved from a bat three actually to a bat four against Wales midway through the game and that had a, a really great effect and allowed Denmark to dominate and go on and win that match 4-0. Both these teams have a 4-0 under their belts in the knockout stages so far. Simon Kier carrying the ball forward for Denmark. Harry Kane reluctant to close him down. Hoiberg now feeds a good ball forward to Damsgaard who can turn and work it out to Joachim Mela on the left-hand side. He's supported by Mikel Damsgaard once again. Two players who ply their trade in Serie A with Sampdoria and Atalanta respectively. Dolberg of Nice will now help out to Strigger Larsen on the right-hand side. He finds Brathwaite who he spotted the run of Mela down the left-hand side. Just couldn't quite execute the pass and England are able to scramble the ball clear. But this is certainly a decent period in the match for Denmark. Still goalless at Wembley between England and Denmark after a fast start from England. The Danes have now settled down and are enjoying plenty of the ball and, and playing with a, a bit of confidence. Still, chances are at a premium. England have had a couple of efforts. Raheem Sterling snatching at one in the box that went straight down the throat of Kasper Schmeichel and Harry Kane, a speculative effort from the edge of the area that went well wide. And one or two nervy moments at the other end for Jordan Pickford in goal uh, for England. His poor clearance actually hit Mikel Damsgaard and it led to half an opportunity for the Danes again goalkeeper wasn't really troubled so the game is bubbling up and it's a very even contest overall it's England nil Denmark nil yeah and England just trying to get a foothold back in this game Luke Shaw on the left hand side looks forward goes inside then Declan Rice passes it back to Harry Maguire I thought he maybe could have given him a shout to open his body out was Maguire now finds Rice Rice will look to switch will he no just done a bit of pressure it's good pressing by Thomas Delaney Stones has to go all the way back to Jordan Pickford. He puts his left foot through it. Allowed to bounce by Christensen. Stringer Larson then lost it away with his left foot. Scrappy bit of play this as uh, Maguire. Then Rice. Carl Walker wants it acres of space. Harry uh, Kane tried to turn. It's great play of Estegard though. Delaney prods it forward. Looking for Brathwaite. Cut out. Norsgaard now. Into Dolberg. Dolberg can't quite get it out of his feet. Damsgaard. Edge of the box. No one wants to touch him because he knows he'll be a penalty. Gets the shot away. Decent effort. Best effort we've seen so far. Bales hit the target, though. Yeah, he's a very dangerous player, Mikel Damsgaard. He's really coming of age in this tournament. Turned 21 the day Denmark beat the Czech Republic in the quarterfinals and did really nice there. Again, one of those efforts we were mentioning, Chiesa and Signa, the Italian players, earlier on with the chance Sterling had. This is very similar. Damsgaard e executes it a lot better than Sterling did, but thankfully, from an England point of view, just curled the effort wide of the target. Yeah, searching for that uh, far corner there, wasn't it? The Sampdoria man had his head down, whipped it with his right foot, but not enough. But uh, Denmark, you can tell they're feeling encouraged by what's gone on for the last 15 minutes. So England were by far the better team in the opening stage, but Denmark have really come to life. Cal Walker over the halfway line. He's got back Bakayo Saka inside him. Finds Saka, the Arsenal man, tries to slalom between a couple of would-be tacklers. Then Mailer fouls him, I thought. Yes, Danny McKayley, um straight on the spot there was the Dutchman. Saka wants to take it earlier, but I think Harry Kane just tells him to calm down. Allow John Stones and uh, Harry Maguire up at the field. Mailer did well initially, then just seemed to lose his, uh, uh, his bearings there. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> it was a, a full-back tackle, but in rugby there, Tom, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, we've praised Joachim Mela, haven't we? He's a very good attack-minded uh, wing-back, and he is good defensively, but he's better going forward than he is uh, going the other way. And just panicked a little bit there, wasn't quite sure where he, Saka, and the goal was, really. 
and give, as it's given away this free kick, which is in a, a promising area for England. Yeah, Mason Mount flips it into the box. Maguire's there. Sorry, Simon. Yeah, good header away. John Stones will pick it up at the back post. Roll it back to Luke Shaw. Body still in the box for England. Whipped in by Shaw towards Harry Kane. Kane gets up. I think he had the jump on Vestergaard, but both of them missed it. Mason Mount down by the corner flag on the right of England's attack. Mount turns back. Mailer for company. Phillips then round the corner for Saka. I thought Phillips could have maybe taken it on himself. Saka will keep going. Bundles his way through. And it just hits Mailer in the chest. Mail then pass it to Hoiberg. He'll hoof it away. Walker will head it down calmly. He's had a good start to this game, Kyle Walker. Into uh, Calvin Phillips. Now Luke Shaw strides forward. He's got Rice behind him. And Raheem Sterling to his left-hand side. Just took his foot off the ball there. Sterling rolls underneath his uh, the studs of his right boot. Out for a throw. And whereas uh, Denmark, they gave a few silly free kicks away. Similar there from Sterling. Just takes the pressure off the opposition. Yeah, he was already had his head up trying to see what his next pass was going to be. Or what he was going to do next. And, and miscontrolled. It would have been interesting to see. We haven't had a replay of the of the cross that came in for Harry Kane a, a few minutes ago. It, it looked like that ball was there for him to win an attack. But he, he didn't really go for it and ended up jumping past the ball. I wonder if he was expecting more of a physical challenge from Vestergaard that didn't come and he just lost his bearings slightly as as we see England give away a, another free kick in a, in a relatively dangerous area. A lovely turn from Dolberg initially and then Mason Mount comes across him and arm in the face gives away the free kick. Yeah, just to point the elbow from uh, Mount there. Lovely play initially by Dolberg to get away from Declan Rice. Yeah, and a, a free kick to uh, the Danes. Probably around 40 yards out, right of centre, a crossing opportunity rather than a shooting chance. England have got a really, really high line outside the D by the looks of it. Jordan Pickford all in uh, old gold, I would describe as uh, similar to Wolves, is the, the colour I was thinking. Um, he uh, just has a, a drink of his water. Really, oh, this is interesting. All the attacking and defending players, I would say, 15 of them in uh, about a five yard space there everyone clumped together let's see what Denmark are uh, planning here as uh, Strigel Larsen again floats in I thought he might play it square to someone like Thomas Delaney and a foul against an English player on Andres Christensen the Dutchman in charge Danny McKayley was right on the spot we're going to see it again it's Luke Shaw on uh, Christensen and Shaw's got his arms round him. He's not playing the ball there, is he, Tom? So uh, the right call there from the referee. Yeah, it's a free kick. You don't always see them given, particularly against the defensive side. If that was in the penalty area, I wonder if Danny McKayley would have been appointed to the spot. But Luke Shaw was holding Christensen, and this is a free kick. We've had a lot of dangerous set pieces, haven't we, in the game so far? But this is the first one you would suggest that's in striking range for either side. Yeah, if you're a right-footed taker and you're practicing your free kicks, this is where you put your first one on the training ground. As it's just probably level with Jordan Pickford's left post. Suits the right footer, 30 yards out. Maybe actually it's less, isn't it? 27 yards out because the wall is just about a yard inside the England box. Pickford lines them up. There's four in there, plus one uh, lying behind to prevent a low effort. It's Damsgaard, what an effort, what a goal! Denmark have taken a lead, it's Damsgaard, the youngster. What a free kick that is by the Danish number 14, 21 years old. And that, wow, what a wonderful goal. That is a goal that's worthy of taking the team to a final. Deadlock broken at Wembley and what a goal it is. It's England nil, Denmark 1. Mikkel Damsgaard is the scorer, one of the youngest players on the pitch, just 21 years of age. It's a free kick over 25 yards out. He steps up and bullets the right foot effort. He powers it beyond Jordan Pickford's outstretched dive and into the back of the net. The power beat Pickford. He couldn't get across, perhaps unsighted as well, the goalkeeper. But it's all about the strike of Mikkel Damsgaard. Technique to perfection. And Denmark have the lead. England nil, Denmark won. First time Pickford's conceded in this tournament. It's a, a wonderful free kick. There might be doubt so. Could he have gone over a bit quicker? It's not right in the co corner at all. The Danish fans at Wembley can't quite believe it. The English fans may be in a sense of shock. Harry Kane to the level just to calm down. 15 minutes or so to the break. England nil. Denmark won. Damsgaard. What a free kick that was. He's had quite a few in this uh, tournament. and not always gone to plan. But, well, what a time to uh, pick one out.
Pickford needs to recover now. First goal is conceded in the tournament. Back underway. England throw in. And I'm just racking my brains here. This is the first time they've been behind in the tournament as well, isn't it? Yeah, first goal conceded. Yeah, the first time they've faced any real kind of adversity in that regard. It's going to be a test of this young England side's uh, character. I mean, we spoke about previous semi-finals. They were ahead against Croatia in the in the World Cup uh, semi-final three years ago. They were ahead against Germany in Euro 96. So it's going to be interesting to see how England respond to this. But fabulous from Denmark. I think there will be a bit of heat for Jordan Pickford, who perhaps should have done better from an England perspective. But I think we should be focusing on the quality and the brilliance showing there by such a young man who's got a big, big future. Well, not just ahead of him. He's a big, he's a big player right now, isn't he? Absolutely. Second goal of the tournament. Oh, the Sampdoria man, Stones nods it forward. Harry Kane's onto it, but uh, Vestergaard will get there first. Hoists it up into the air. Declan Rice heads it up, then Hoiberg heads it behind him. Stiga Larsson, a bit untidy at the moment, but Christensen just brings a bit of composure to the play. Then Stiga Larsson almost loses out to Mason Mount, throwing to the Danes just inside uh, their own half. Gareth Southgate and Steve Holland discuss tactics. And... Uh, I imagine it was a bit of a party atmosphere at kickoff at Wembley. The uh, the air has been let out the balloon by the looks of it. Just seeing the uh, expressions of those at the ground. Yeah, and I think it's been a gradual process. Denmark have grown into the game. They've been getting better and better. And you know, the last 10, 15 minutes, they have been the the better side of the two. It, it hasn't been coming in the sense. It was Pickford with another poor clearance gives the ball away and the chance for for further Denmark pressure. Yeah, Stigal and it was uh, straight into the, the chest of Dolberg, wasn't it, who played it down to Martin Brathway, who hardly mentioned the Barcelona man so far in this game. Comes to nothing in the end. And Gareth Southgate just tells everyone to calm down. That's exactly what the three Lions need. Trading 1-0 in the semi-final. Luke Shaw down the line. Sterling was he fouled. Play on because Mason Mount has it. Sterling now inside left position. Hoiberg wants to foul him. He can't quite get to him at the moment. Though, and Sterling turns back inside. Low ball in. Looking to play it through the legs. Phillips almost picks out the second. But Mailer gets there. Damsgaard turns Walker. But Walker again. Good pace by the Manchester City man. Can Croy turn and get the ball back? He would have opened up against a... Uh, a less mobile fullback there for uh, the Denmark goal scorer. Walker did well. Luke Shaw. Back to Harry Maguire. All of the outfield players, barring John Stones, in the Denmark half. Right to left as we're looking at our TV pictures. It's unofficial off tube studio commentary. Almost into the 35th minute of the game. England nil, Denmark one. Walker, Stones now. Maguire alongside him. The other side of the halfway line goes square to the Manchester United man. A goal scorer against Ukraine. He can wander out of his own half. Feeds a good ball to Harry Kane. Kane turns. Can he get the shot away? Thomas Delaney fouls him. That's got to be a yellow card, surely. He wasn't letting him go, was he? He wasn't. It's really good play from Harry Kane. Turns nicely. Good strength and, and balance. And, and Delaney couldn't resist a sliding in. I'm not sure if the referee is going to get the, the yellow card. Now, Delaney... He's never going to get to the ball, but really good protecting of, of the ball from Harry Kane there. I think that's what he was looking for as soon as he turned. He wanted the free kick. And, you know, this is as equally good position for England as the, the goal we saw from Damsgaard a few minutes ago. Yeah, looks to escape the caution, does uh, Delaney. I'm thinking this actually from set pieces from the corner kick that Denmark had. They're going to have a tall wall. They must have six six-footers plus in their... Um, uh, side so it's going to take something special we've seen something special from Damsgaard with that free kick Kasper Schmeichel lines up the wall skipping between his two posts Raheem Sterling's one of those over the ball three goals for the tournament of course I think he was the favourite to win the player of the tournament award when I had a look a couple of days ago Strigger Larsson's got the job of lying behind the wall Dahlberg, Vestergaard, Kier, Christensen and Hoiberg are the men in that wall Delaney's also there Mount Shaw and Sterling are the options. Sterling looks like the man is going to take it. Floats it into the wall. And out for a throw to uh, England on the right-hand side. Mikael Damsgaard, superb free kick. Still separates the two sides. England nil. Denmark one. England have just tried to respond with a free kick of their own. Raheem Sterling with the curling effort. But Simon Kier, really brave defending in the Denmark wall, was able to 
to head the ball clear. England are trying to respond since falling behind, but Jordan Pickford still looking a little bit nervy in goal for the second time in this half. He's given the ball straight to a Danish player from a clearance. This time, Denmark weren't able to capitalise, but that will be a concern for Gary Southgate and co. It's England nil, Denmark won. Walker, long throw into the box. Flicked on by Harry Maguire. It bounces to Harry Kane going away from goal. On the left edge of the box, turns. Can he keep it in? Yes, he can. Crosses towards the penalty spot. Good header. Simon Kian. Brathwaite brings it down. Sliding tackle by Mount. Rides it, Brathwaite. And Mele, he'll break. Damsgaard ahead of him. Brathwaite there too. And Hoiberg. Brathwaite's got space. Hoiberg's in acres on the right edge of the box. If you can find him. The 23. Chips it towards the back post. Dolberg's there. It's over everyone though. Harry Maguire will bring it away down the line to Saka. Delaney's fouled him, has he? Not according to Danny McHale. Hoiberg did so well to get there, couldn't find the cross though. Yeah, it's, it's really good counter-attacking play uh, from Denmark. They've had you know, a really tough time. They've come from Baku, haven't they? Azerbaijan for their quarter-final. Lots of travelling, lots of moving around. I think they had a day in Copenhagen before heading to to Wembley for this match but the any energy levels are, are absolutely fantastic and that midfield too of Delaney and Hoiberg I've, I've been really impressed with them so far the discipline they've shown on the whole the ability to pinch the ball back and then both of them on separate occasions have, have shown good willingness to get forward as well Phillips finds a bit of space in the centre circle rolls it wide to Kyle Walker down the line to Saka, and he's getting the game a bit more, he feels Saka. Man of the match against the Czech Republic. Nice ball through to Harry Kane. Kane tries to cut it back. Sterling's there! What a save! Straight at the goalkeeper, you have to say, but you've still got to spread yourself. Schmeichel did just that. Sterling couldn't find either side of him. That was a lot better from England, Tom. That was by far and the best chance, by, by, by far and the best, I should say, chance that England have created in this first half. It's brilliant from Bakaya Saka and Harry Kane down the right-hand side. Cross comes in. Sterling's able to brush off his marker. And you think once he gets there, he's going to score. But Kasper Schmeichel gets it, makes himself big and makes a brilliant save. Yes, you could argue Sterling should be scoring, should be finding the corner. But the goalkeeper, who loves playing at Wembley, incidentally, was fabulous when these two sides met in the Nations League back in the autumn. Brilliant for Leicester in the FA Cup final as well. As Saka might have a chance for England now. Yeah, down the right-hand side, rolls it in. It's a goal. It's an own goal. Simon Kier, that's what I'm going to read it as at the moment. Sterling will claim it. Saka... In that pocket behind, I'd said he needs to get into the game, didn't I, Tom? <laughs> I think it is Simon Kier, the Danish goalkeeper, the unlucky man. He's going back towards his own goal. He's yards out. There's nothing else he can do, really. Gareth Southgate relieved. 1-1 England-Denmark. Game on at Wembley. It's England 1, Denmark 1. An equaliser for England. It looks like an own goal for Danish captain Simon Kier. Raheem Sterling had just missed a glorious opportunity minutes before this, but... Kane and Saka, who set up that chance again combined. Saka gets to the byline, pulls it back. Sterling's there for a tap-in. Kier has to slide in as he's backpedalling towards his own goal. And the uh, captain, as I say, diverts the ball into the back of his own net. Nothing really he could do. Incisive England attacking play. And the game is all level again. England 1, Denmark 1. Yeah, he must have had a moment where he thought he might go over the bar. Hits his thigh and ricochets up into the air and just about goes into the roof of the net so frustrating from the or for the Danish skipper rather twice now we mentioned that they keep going over the top over the top of Vestergaard no joy twice they've gone down his flank the left hand side of the back three for Denmark and twice they've had joy in the last five minutes or so 39 and a half on the clock England won Denmark won Kasper Hulman have to say still remains pretty calm and relaxed the 49 year old Successful spells at Norgeland and a bit of a spell in uh, De uh, Germany as well with uh, Mainz too. Took over last year from Aga Harreid, who'd been uh, there for some time, I have to say. As uh, Walker throws it down the line, Vestergaard nods it down the line. Here's Damsgaard, nice feet to go inside to Dolberg. Hoiberg tries to flick it on, it bounces off Phillips and Dolberg picks up the seconds. Square ball, it's going to be Stiga Larsen's ball as well. Right edge of England's box. Just a bit too far wide for the Udinese man to hit the line. So we'll go back to Hoiberg. Delaney's got time to turn if he wants it, but goes back to Christensen. And now the Danes set up on the edge of England territory on the halfway line. As Kier can give it to Hoiberg, he'll turn. Didn't quite fancy taking on his Spurs club mate, Harry Kane, though. Hoiberg has it again. Back to Kier. 
on the halfway line. Tall blonde figure rolls it to Delaney. Christensen, this is good possession for Denmark, but uh, I think the body language tells you, understandably so, just uh, not the confidence somewhat that equalises her. Yeah, it will have done because it hadn't really been coming until that brief period where the Sterling chance was created and, and then the goal. Denmark were looking quite comfortable, the better side, and I think Kasper Hulmund would have been desperate for them to get to half time at the very least still leading 1-0 that would have been a, a psychological blow to strike against England but England credit to them great play on a couple of occasions between the front three and it's got them back on level terms before half time Brathwaite flicks it past Maguire Declan Rice does his defensive duties well though he's had a bit of a quiet first half Rice but he's done really well there Maguire just caught the wrong side of the ball Maguire under a bit of pressure clears it down the line and blocked by Brathwaite throw to uh, the uh, hosts, we're going to see that Schmeichel save again, straight at his midriff, but he, oh, uh, the best way to describe that is it's a Schmeichel save, isn't it? He spreads himself so well. Yeah, it's, it's an iconic, it, 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 the save that runs in the Schmeichel family, no other goalkeeper can do it other than Casper and his father Peter, but just looking at that again, it is a really good save from Schmeichel, I don't want to take that away from him, but it's probably a, a poor finish really from Raheem Sterling, straight down the, the midriff of the goalkeeper and the saving grace for Sterling, of course, is that England, a matter of seconds later, did manage to get the equalising goal. Yeah, excellent positioning, wasn't it? As uh, Rice turns and finds uh, John Stones, who just fizzes it back to Harry Maguire. Maguire will switch the play to uh, Kyle Walker, who's got time to uh, control on the right-hand side. Feeds it into Phillips, breaking from midfield. Saka, that'll give him confidence the last five minutes. Uh, Sterling could have turned. Touch wasn't the best, though. Now he can turn into space. No one went with him. Drives towards the Danish defence. Rice to Shaw, just behind Shaw, so he has to go back. But England's still quite comfortable in possession. But Denmark quite comfortable in the defence as well. All the Danes behind the ball. Two minutes of the 45 left. Maguire, Harry Kane, the England captain, looks up. He sees Saka wide on the right-hand side in a bit of space. He seems to be trying to pull Mailer out of position. That's what he does. Saka now. Damsgaard will help uh, Mailer out. Saka back to Walker. Walk on the underlapping run. Phillips has a crossing opportunity. Whips it in away by Vestergaard. Time for Harry Maguire on about 30 yards out. Thought about the shot maybe a few years ago. Would have taken that on. Gives it to his Manchester United clubmate Luke Shaw. Rice. 90 seconds of the first 45 left. Phillips. Walker's ball in over everyone. Shaw will pick it up at the back post. Real venom on that ball. Drills the ball in. I thought they were going to play keep ball there because it almost went through to Walker. But no, Damsgaard cuts it out. Rice now. Right back in the middle of the pitch, 30 yards out. Mount. Shaw thought about the cross. There's no England white shirts in the box. So Calvin Phillips is now floating into a nice pocket of space. Harry Kane dropping deep, 30 yards out. will work it back to uh, Rice. He's almost the middle man of a, a back three at the moment. Maguire on the halfway line. Points to Phillips where he wants it to give it to him. Phillips shows nice feet to get away from Dahlberg. Harry Kane, good possession from England, but you do get the feeling they're playing in front of uh, the Danes at the moment. Mount. Shaw. Shaw cuts inside. Maybe not on his right foot. Turns back on his left. Makes an overlapping run. Mount, nice ball through to Sterling in the box, trying to create that half a yard. Now Kane, Kane rolls it through to Saka. Saka made a good run right to left, but Kier, ever vigilant, cut it out. Yeah, difficult ball for Harry Kane, but, but nice idea to try and slide Saka in. The end of this first half, having a similar feel to the start of the, of the, pick, of the game as well, with England dominating possession, Denmark sitting deep and, and happy to soak up the pressure. Denmark, I think, would welcome half time now and in fact the referee isn't going to add on any additional time at the end of the first half so a very entertaining opening 45 minutes
is brought to a conclusion. Sing it into the six yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling, but Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in, and unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half time, it's England one, Denmark one. At half time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out. But England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side. The latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling. But Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in and unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out. But England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side. The latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling. But Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in and, unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out. But England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side. The latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling. But Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in and, unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out. But England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side. The latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling. But Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in and, unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out. But England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side. The latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling. But Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in and, unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out. But England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side. The latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling. But Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in and, unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out. But England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side. The latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling. But Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in and, unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out. But England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side. The latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling. But Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in and, unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out. But England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side. The latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling. But Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in and, unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. 
At half time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out. But England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side. The latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling. But Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in and unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out. But England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side. The latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling. But Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in and unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out. But England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side. The latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling. But Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in and unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out. But England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side. The latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling. But Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in and unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out. But England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side. The latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling. But Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in and unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out. But England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side. The latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling. But Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in and unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out. But England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side. The latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling. But Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in and unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out. But England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side. The latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling. But Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in and unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out. But England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side. The latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling. But Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in and unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out. But England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side. The latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling. But Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in and unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. 
At half time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out. But England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side. The latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling. But Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in and unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. At half time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out, but England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side, the latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling, but Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in, and unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out, but England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side, the latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling, but Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in, and unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out, but England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side, the latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling, but Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in, and unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out, but England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side, the latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling, but Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in, and unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out, but England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side, the latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling, but Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in, and unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out, but England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side, the latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling, but Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in, and unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out, but England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side, the latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling, but Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in, and unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out, but England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side, the latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling, but Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in, and unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out, but England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side, the latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling, but Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in, and unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half-time, it's England 1, Denmark 1. 
At half time, it's England one, Denmark one. The Danes took the lead on 30 minutes. Mikkel Damsgaard with a superb free kick from fully 25 yards out. But England weren't behind for long, just nine minutes in fact. Great play between Harry Kane and Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side. The latter crossing into the six-yard box, looking for Raheem Sterling. But Denmark captain Simon Kier slid in and unfortunately for him, turned the ball into the back of his own net. At half-time, it's England one, Denmark one. And it's a very warm welcome back to our independent off-tube studio commentary of England against Denmark. The second half just underway at Wembley, as you were just hearing. If you missed the first half, it is one all. Uh, Mikkel Damsgaard scoring a superb free kick for Denmark on the half hour to give them the lead at what the, the at the time was a deserved lead. But England drew level just nine minutes later. An own goal from Simon Kier after good work from Harry Kane and Bekaya Saka. Across from Saka and turned into his own net by Kier. That's why it's 1-1 then going into this second half. No changes made by either side at the break. It's myself, Tom McGarry and Jack Ogilby talking you through the rest of this evening's coverage. We may have extra time and penalties on our hands for the second successive night. But we'll be hoping we can get uh, plenty of drama between now and the end of the 90 minutes. Jordan Pickford will take an early free kick in this second half for England. Jack, what are you expecting in the... Uh, Opening stages of this second period. Well, we went all the way last night, didn't we? And you wouldn't be surprised to see it happen again. You mentioned extra time and uh, penalties. I thought Denmark were very impressive after a wobbly opening 10 minutes or so. England, though, got the goal and they were the stronger team towards the end of uh, that half. I think Gareth Southgate would have been hugely encouraged by the way his side um, recovered from going 1-0 uh, down, of course, that's the first goal they've conceded through the whole tournament, so by default, really, the first time they've been behind. I thought they responded, they had that good chance with Sterling, great save by Schmeichel. Then the goal came, a hint of fortune about it, but I suppose you make your own look at this stage of the tournament. I said it at the start, you said it too, Tom, this is going to be every second counts in this game. I think it's going to be one of those. Absolutely, and as you say, England had... The first 10 minutes and the last 10 minutes probably of the first half on top. Denmark, you could probably say, shaded the rest. So on the balance, 1-1, probably a fair scoreline going into the second period as the scorer of the Danish goal, Mikkel Damsgaard, coming of age in this tournament. Works it out to uh, Jens Strigger larsen on the right-hand side. Now Kier, who can't really attach any blame to the own goal if he wasn't sliding in there. Raheem Sterling was tapping into an empty net. Mailer now for Denmark, who's trying to feed it in field. It's blocked by Calvin Phillips, and there might be an opportunity now for England with Bakaya Saka down the right-hand side. Vestergaard comes across. Did he foul the Arsenal player? No, he doesn't, uh, says the referee. Oh, initially, uh, the free kick wasn't given. There was a bit of uncertainty there, but Danny McKelly and his assistant between the two officials, they decided it should have been a free kick. Yeah, the flag didn't go up, but he clearly moves. He's, he's trying to turn, but he clearly moves uh, towards Saka, obstructs him. Uh, free kick wide on the right-hand side, uh, a decent, it's pretty much level with the 18-yard line, is it? A really good opportunity, this for England. Yeah, great crossing position. We've got uh, Saka standing over it as the left-footed option and Mount, the right-footed one. Mount has tended to monopolise the England set-pieces so far in this game. John Stones forward from the back as well. Harry Maguire undoubtedly will be up there too. Pushing going on between... Harry Kane and uh, Simon Kier at the moment. That's the forces the referee to come across and, and speak to the two respective captains. As Wembley awaits this free kick being delivered into the box. Already some very nervous faces around the stadium as Mount whips in towards the far post. Maguire attacking it. It was a brave defending at the far post by Simon Kier. The referee's got his notebook out and he's going to book Harry Maguire. It looked like a, a challenge in the air. Kier has ended up on the floor quite sure what Danny McKayley's seen but he's given the yellow card and Harry Maguire is absolutely furious yeah we're going to see it again um, I don't know what why that's a yellow card if I'm totally honest with you Harry Maguire wins the header yes he jumps with his arm but you've got to jump with your arm very brave you have to say by Simon Kerr but uh, that's the first time I've ever seen a yellow card given for that especially as he's won the <laughs> what's he had yeah it's it's uh, very strange call, I would say. That. Yeah, he very, very harsh. You can form a lesser teammates there, Maguire and Kasper Schmeichel, having a, a rather heated debate. Kerr yeah, is in some distress on the floor, so that's a, that's a concern. He's receiving treatment now. But how about you? Maguire is challenging for the ball. He, he's won the ball, yeah. but he can't do anything. He's running onto the ball. Kerr is running away. He's really brave by Kerr. He's 
taking a real whack and he's the rightly taking the time over him. But I, I, it'd be interesting to get the explanation of the referee there because Maguire is running onto the ball. All he can see is the ball. He has to jump so his arm's in the air because he's in the air. I don't really know. A free kick maybe, over the, although I think that's quite harsh. But a yellow card, that's really harsh. Well, that's it. I was going to say, it's a borderline uh, free kick, if you like. He does put his arm on on the shoulder of Kjerd. It's a bit of an occupational hazard for the uh, for the Danish defender, as you say, who is brave, challenging for the ball. Uh, that's one of those that Simon Kerr will be surprised at a yellow card, but he'll probably be surprised that he got a free kick from it. It's you know, yeah. rugged centre-half himself. He'd be, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> Maguire's not having it. <laughs> He's still shaking his head, probably seen a replay in the stadium. Like, I, genuinely, I think that's the first time I've ever seen a yellow card given for it that kind of incident yeah, I was surprised it, it, it was a free kick at first if it's a swinging arm when, you, when you're challenging the ball and, and the point of the elbow catches the player we see yellow cards and probably rightly so for that but that was a, a fair honest challenge between two players barely a free kick certainly not a yellow card what Harry Maguire probably needs to do is just uh, calm himself down though because he's still shaking his head a, a matter of minutes later as, as play restarts he needs to get that out of his head and, and refocus and, and regather his composure as Vestergaard robs Kane of the ball and Denmark can look to break forward. Mailer plays it into Dolberg. Dolberg gets a strike away. That's a brilliant save from Jordan Pickford who was questioned for his role in the Danish goal should he have kept out Mikkel Damsgaard's free kick where he can't question the goalkeeper's quality there. Possibly it wouldn't have counted anyway. Dolberg may have been offside but his strike from the edge of the area was crisp but the save was brilliant from uh, Pickford. I know you can't dwell in football but that would be double trouble for... Uh, um, England there because Dolber is clearly offside and because of that yellow card which we're not quite sure about oh, the, the, the offside has actually been given to him I was going to say because Harry Maguire in normal time without a yellow card he hammers Dolberg there he takes the ball doesn't he but he knows he can't make just in case he makes the foul um, yeah it was a good save by Pickford and I have to say Dolberg has been brilliant tonight I think he's he's been the player that Harry Kane quite hasn't been so far he's been dropping off turning nicely picking up space very, very impressive. Similar kind of players. Certainly when Kane drops deep, he, it's kind of what Dolberg naturally wants to do. He's not necessarily an out-and-out -out centre forward himself, but he's fulfilling that role, dropping deep. The interchange, particularly with Damsgaard, has, has been really impressive throughout the knockout stages. Denmark, that's a large reason why they look such a threat when they, when they do come forward, even though on the whole they've seen a lot less of the ball and territory when compared to England. They're looking to come forward again, the... The team in all red this evening. Yannick Vestergaard in possession. Rolls it across to Andreas Christensen. Had a bit of a nervy start to the game himself. The Chelsea player feeds it into Hoiberg. Hoiberg out to the right-hand side. And this might be a, a decent opportunity for Denmark. Strigel Larsen into Brathwaite who gets it back off Hoiberg. Crosses from the right-hand side. Dangerous ball. Pickford comes out. Possibly could have caught but takes no chances and, and punches effectively enough clear. Vestergaard and Saka are a little bit untidy as they challenge for the ball. Denmark come away with it. It's Hoiberg again who's heavily involved, but he's tried to whip that out towards Mailer and it goes out for a throw. Yeah, not quite sure what Pickford was doing there. That's exactly as good as Pickford is. That's where you need Nick Pope in goal, isn't it? Because he'll just catch that. He had time. And Kyle Walker, you can see him giving him the shout as well. Good ball in by Brathway, but not really giving much for Dahlberg nor Delaney coming into the back post, much to attack. Pickford goes for the, the Superman punch and put his side into a bit of trouble. Lively start to the second half. Still England won, Denmark won. Denmark have had a really decent effort towards goal from Kasper Dolberg that drew the best from Jordan Pigford. The goalkeeper may have been at fault for Denmark's goal during the first half, but he made a brilliant save low down to his left uh, right-hand side on this occasion. The offside flag actually had been raised, so it wouldn't have counted even if Dolberg had found the back of the net. Harry Maguire's picked up the first yellow card of the game as well for England. Very harsh decision with a, an aerial challenge from a free kick on that Simon Kier. Barely a free kick should have been given by the referee, but to give a yellow card seems very harsh on the England defender. It remains one apiece. Foul on Mailer by, or foul by Mailer rather, on uh, Harry Kane. That was very harsh, I thought, there. And uh, a free kick to England. Level with the uh, penalty spot on the right-hand side. Mountain Sacker again, the two candidates, a right-footer and a left-footer. Denmark defence again, a high line. Mount. Deep breaths. Surveys the situation. One arm up, usually means front post, doesn't it? 
Goes towards the centre of the goal. Maguire is there. Gets there. What a save. Show Michael diving to his right hand side. And both me and my co commentator shake our heads because Maguire, I thought, had more of care then than he did for when he got the yellow card. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was just thinking before that free kick came in, Harry Maguire's probably not going to really challenge for this, yeah. so just, just in case. But he attacked that uh, really well there. Good header, angling towards the, the far corner, but Kasper Schmeichel at full stretch makes a really good save. Uh, both keepers now have made good stops at the start of this second half. The header from Maguire possibly just didn't quite have enough power to get beyond Schmeichel, but the goalkeeper still had to get across and claw the ball away. But certainly no sign so far this second half is going to slow down. The first half was played at a really good pace and it's, it's continuing in that manner at the moment. Denmark in possession. Christensen in towards Kier, who has recovered from the uh, clattering he got from Harry Maguire. Mailer then, was he fouled by... John Stones, yes he was, it'll be a free kick to Denmark, it might give us an opportunity actually to see this Schmeichel save again, Maguire, it's exactly the same challenge isn't it on, on Kier, you're right, and it's a great header spinning away from Schmeichel and he does have to claw it away with his fingertips. Yeah, claws it away, perfect description there Tom, diving to his right hand side, I think Wembley thought Maguire had scored their fabulous save Schmeichel. Yeah, and uh, Maguire who scored in the quarter-final inches away from putting England in front for the first time this evening as now Denmark come forward, Dolberg there's all kinds of space for Strigger Larsson on the right hand side, Dolberg finds the wing back who releases Brathwaite in the penalty area, his attempted low flash cross into the six yard box is blocked behind by Maguire, it will be a corner, it's quite end to end at the moment, one side having a, a decent opportunity and then the other going up the other end and Equally putting pressure on the opposition's goal. It's a, it's a chance for Vestergaard, Kier and Christensen to all come forward. Jack, you mentioned in the first half, Denmark are a, a very tall team. Should man for man have, a, have an aerial advantage on the England players? Only really, you'd say, Maguire and Stones, the Rice maybe the big players for England. And Denmark may be able to cause problems from this set piece. Strigger Larsson... Wasn't always the most accurate with his dead balls into the box during the first half. He'll have a, another opportunity with this whip ball towards the penalty spot. No one challenging Maguire who can head away comfortably. It'll break though to Mailer on the edge of the area who feeds it out to Damsgaard. Damsgaard looking to take on Mason Mount and dig out a cross. He's managed to do so. He thought he had. Brathwaite has a volley at the, the far stick but the referee... And his assistant have already decided that the ball drifted out from Damsgaard, so it'll be a goal kick to England. Yeah, always looks dangerous, Damsgaard, whenever he gets the ball. And interesting the way that Denmark are approaching those set pieces. They're trying something different every time, are they? Oh, I'm not quite sure that did go out, I have to say. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, that was a bit fortunate for England, I thought. Um, but... Um, uh, yeah, they're trying something different every time. Stringer Larson's delivery was a bit strange, though. He went for the penalty spot, and there was only Bukayo Saka there. It was, uh, his delivery is the one thing that's let them down from those set pieces. Yeah, I'm surprised he's still been on them, in all truth. They have plenty of quality dead ball specialists who can knock the ball in. Of course, Christian Eriksen would be the obvious one to uh, to take the, the majority of, of Denmark's set pieces. But as you'll all know, he's unavailable. That's a lovely lead from Brathwaite to find Dolberg on the edge of the area. This time he's turning and shooting on his left foot, not quite striking it with the same power as we saw of his right a, a few minutes ago. And this time it's a routine save straight down the throat of Jordan Pickford. A fabulous turn initially by uh, Dolberg onto his left foot. Took uh, John Stones out of the game, but just hesitated for half a second on his weaker left foot. And the, the effort wasn't the best, but really encouraging from Denmark now. It is. It's going to be interesting to see as well from a Danish point of view. In, in both knockout games, Damsgaard and, and Dolberg have tended to come off around the hour mark. We're approaching that point now. I, I'd be surprised if Kasper Hulmund was looking to take them off, but... They were also impressive in those previous two games, so maybe that's just a tactical shift he likes to make. They've got players like Yusuf Paulson who can come on. Yeah, well, it's interesting. Paulson was going to be the main man coming into this tournament. Was He was playing through the middle. Never quite looks comfortable in that position. I always think he's better off the right or the left when you see, when you see him playing for um, RB Leipzig. But Dolberg's almost come of age in this tournament. Mason Mount for England. This could be a, a promising situation. Sterling, he's got Shaw overlapping. Luke Shaw pulls it into the six-yard box. It could have been another Denmark own goal. It's ricocheted out to play. Mailer trying to prevent the corner. Hasn't been able to do so. It was Pierre-Emil Hoiberg, I think, who diverted the ball towards his home goal. He must have had his heart in his mouth for a second, but it has only gone behind for a corner. Yeah, that would have been so unfortunate, wouldn't it, for Hoiberg. Came off the inside of his uh, left boot, almost his back hip.
heel as he was trying to block it. It spun away. It was always spinning away from goal. I suppose Mason Mount with a corner kick. Yeah, Mount out swinging with the right boot. It's towards Maguire again, challenging with Kier. It's a real heavyweight tussle between those two. The balls come out now to Luke Shaw, who helps it back into the area, but too much loft on the ball, always favouring Kasper Schmeichel, who quickly looks to get Denmark on the counter-attack. What a clearance that was, or pass, I should say, from Schmeichel, but Damsgaard, under a bit of pressure, wasn't able to control. Yeah, it was a lovely bit of play, wasn't it? by uh, Schmeichel. I've noticed it from Kier as well. Both of them have that lovely, just lean back and almost slice across the ball. He's trying it so purely, almost picked out Damsgaard, two on one. Again, though, we have to give credit to Kyle Walker. He's been excellent this evening and cut out the danger. We've hit the hour mark then in this game. Still England won, Denmark won in this second Euro 2020 semi-final. Uh, reaching that stage where substitutions maybe being considered by Messrs Gareth Southgate and Kasper Hulman. A couple of Danish players are going through a, a rather vigorous warm-up. I have mentioned that Dolberg and Damsgaard, no matter how well they're playing, do tend to be replaced around at this stage, so that might be one to, to look out for. In the meantime, Harry Maguire in possession for England, pressed by Dolberg, has to go back to Jordan Pickford, who will clip the ball out to the right-hand side. Kyle Walker... Will chest it down. and He's shown too much of that to Mailer. Just about gets away with it. Walker shows decent persistence. Links up with Saka nicely. But Kaya Saka hasn't been involved that much. But when he has, he's looked a real threat for England. That's a lovely ball over the top as well by Phillips. Great control by Mason Mount. Vestergaard gets back at him. Mount gets a shot off between Vestergaard and Kier. They block. It comes to Saka. Right-hand side. Cross towards the far post. Schwigger Larsen is there to clear. And how about that for a piece of skill from Martin Brathwaite. Brilliant from the Barcelona man. Holds the play up. Finds Schwigger Larsen on the right hand side and Denmark can get the ball clear. It was great play by Brathwaite, brilliant scrambling defence as well from uh, Denmark. Mason Mount maybe just a yard too close to go for goal, maybe could have squared it but as he was that close to goal may not have had the pass on that he wanted but it was fabulous uh, control at first. England come again. Yeah, Saka, Vestergaard goes in with a strong challenge that's left. Saka on the floor, the referee's not interested, though. It won't be a free kick. Denmark play on. Saka is down. Phillips goes in with a challenge, and he wins the ball. No foul on Damsgaard. Danny McKayley happy to let the play flow. Sterling works out to Shaw on the left-hand side for England. Back it goes towards Raheem Sterling once again. He's stood up by Thomas Delaney. Goes back towards Rice. Kane dropping deep out to the left-hand side as well to get involved. Cuts infield. Finds Stones, which probably tells you how deep Harry Kane has dropped in this move. Rice now to Shaw, into Sterling. Rice has continued his run. Sterling tried to turn it around the corner to him. Christensen intercepts, but it's only momentary respite for Denmark. England will come again. Phillips, incisive ball to Mount. Can't quite squeeze it through to Saka. And Vestergaard makes sure of that. And Denmark, again, very compact defensively when they don't have the ball, making it very difficult for England to play through. Yeah, he's letting the game run, isn't he, the referee? I have to say that. I thought it was a clear foul by Vestergaard on uh, Saka. But England, they're enjoying a bit of possession. That was a really, you said, incisive ball. I thought it was perfect, Tom. Really nice ball by Phillips. Just a bit tight on the edge of the box, but Denmark dropping very, very deep now. Yeah, they're almost camped in a, a bank of four and a bank of five, or a bank of five and a bank of four, I should say, on the edge of their own penalty area. Even Dahlberg dropping deep as Sterling. Good play. Rolls it into Saka, who can't quite return it to Sterling, but the shot comes in for Mason Mount. Trying again, one of those curlers with his right foot towards the far corner but too close to Kasper Schmeichel who makes a routine save yeah just falling away from it as he struck it he couldn't quite it was just under his feet wasn't he, he was trying to dig it out and Yusuf Poulsen is going to come on in the next couple of minutes he's got his uh, shirt on ready to go there's a second player as uh, well Tom Daniel Vass who started the tournament I would suggest he'd be uh, replacing uh, Strigger Larsen although they might have to rethink because Andres Christensen's down yeah this would be a concern for Denmark, as you say, Vass has tended to play as the right wing back when he's come on. He can operate in midfield as well, so you'd imagine that would be for Strigger Larsen, and uh, Paulson would be the the change maybe for Dolberg. They have another substitution lined up as well. The Brentford midfielder Christian Norgard. I wonder if Vass is just being held back. Actually, he's gone back behind the advertising hoardings. Norgard, who's been a regular substitute as well in this tournament, looks like he's going to come on. I wonder if he might operate in the back three. The first change anyway, it's not... Is it, oh, sorry, I thought it was going to be Damsgaard coming off, but it's actually, whilst we've got this period, just a, a drinks break. The graphic coming on my screen saying Damsgaard's coming off, but he is still on the pitch at the yeah, moment. Yeah, does Damsgaard know he's coming <laughs> off? Um, uh, 
Interesting to see um, Christian Norgard, who uh, was injured for the latter part of Brentford's promotion push, wasn't he? And it was touch and go uh, whether he was going to make the squad, but he's appeared a number of times off the bench. The it's still there, the graphic, isn't it? But Damsgaard's making his way back to the left-hand side. This is that old thing when you're trying to uh, ignore the <laughs> the manager that you're going to be uh, taking off. But uh, maybe he's offering some words of encouragement. I'm not sure. Daniel Vass now looks like he's ready to come on. I have to say I was surprised that obviously they want uh, Strigger Larson in the, the team for his delivery. But I think Vass is a really good outlet from them on the right-hand side. Yeah, and we haven't really seen that great equality from Strigger Larson in terms of his, his set plays. Christensen is... Uh, come off to the side now and is getting his left thigh taped up, which would imply that he is OK to continue. So maybe this triple change was always in the offering. I think the the, the graphics department uh, did what I did and, and jumped the gun when it had a close-up on Damsgaard <laughs> and thought he was coming off. We're actually not getting any changes as of yet as play resumes. Yeah, they had that saved as drafts, I think, in the, uh, <laughs> before the game. But, uh, yeah, they were pretty adamant where <laughs> the, the graphics will see, though. It could still be the case, Tom. Yeah, we'll see in a, in a few minutes, probably when the ball next goes out of play, as Kasper Schmeichel launches the ball long. That's a difficult one for John Stones in the uh, in the Wembley Lights to try and cut out. He made a bit of a mess of it, but he's helped out by Kyle Walker, who launches the ball long, straight onto the head of Simon Kier. Christensen is back on the field, incidentally. We're back up to the full quota of 11 versus 11. And about 24 minutes plus stoppage time still to play. England 1, Denmark 1. Denmark preparing this triple change as the ball does go out to play on the right-hand side. Watched out by Strigger Larsson. Are we going to see this substitution now? Kasper Hjulmund standing with his uh, with his uh, three players are about to come on. And Jack Grealish may be about to come on for England as well, getting stripped and ready for action. The Danish changes uh, first then. It's going to be uh, Jens Strigger Larsson going off first of all. And Daniel Vass, so a like-for-like -like replacement there, you would suggest. Uh, right wing back, uh, Vass, who's spent the last few years playing in Spain with the likes of Valencia and Celta Vigo. Damsgaard is coming off, so we were right in, in a way. Uh, Josef Poulsen, the man coming on for him. So Denmark's scorer on the night, as he has been throughout the knockout stages, replaced around the midway point in the second half. And the third and final change for now, this might suggest a little bit of a defensive shift from Kasper Hulman because Kasper Dolberg is off and Christian Norgard is on. Yeah, you think that's Poulsen and Brathwaite up top and neither are real centre-forwards, are they? So it'll be interesting to see how uh, they uh, line up. We've not mentioned it so far, Tom, but I think VAR came to your, uh, uh, set, set your um, recovery then with that uh, change for Damsgaard. You were right in the end. Yeah, we got, we, we got there in there. We, we, we pre-empted it a little bit early as Bakaya Saka, he's got the better of Vestergaard. He tries to bite back at the... England man, the Sackers cross in the end. There was no one in there really in white for him to pick out. And, and Denmark can clear it up towards the halfway line where Maguire beats Paulson to the ball. Carries it forward nicely as well. Harry Maguire helped out by Harry Kane. Now Kyle Walker, right-hand side. He's got Saka outside him. Saka who's becoming more and more influential in this game. He's up against Joachim Mailer. Wants to cut in on his left foot. He's allowed to do so by Mailer. But then the cross from the Arsenal man is a bit too heavy and goes straight out to play for a goal kick and that could spell the introduction of Jack Grealish midway through this second half still England won Denmark won England came ever so close to taking the lead for the first time on the night a cross from the right hand side by Mason Mount Harry Maguire's header angling towards the far corner but it was clawed away at the last possible moment by Kasper Schmeichel a really good save the changes are starting to be made as well a triple one we've seen for Denmark with Vass, Norgard and Poulsen going on and England have just made their first change as well Bakaya Saku who's had a decent night particularly at the start of his second half he's being replaced and Jack Grealish is on it's England one Denmark one yeah Saka the uh, architect of the England goal a hook from Gareth Southgate disappointed you imagine understandably so but uh, Grealish has been excellent off the bench didn't get any minutes at the end of uh, the Ukraine game it was noticeable that Gareth Southgate held him in an embrace and suggesting that you've got a big role to play in the semi-final Grealish on for the final 21 minutes of the 90. Will we get any more? Vass looks up and nice inside ball to Hoiberg. Brathwaite has got Poulsen ahead of him, but not much more. Mailer on the left-hand side. Poulsen's first touch. Brathwaite was uh, fouled in back play by Luke Shaw, it was. The Barcelona man. We don't mention him too often, but 
Every touch he's had have been pretty good ones. Shaw silly there, just blocking him off. Because Paulson's touch wasn't a good one. Rice had won the ball. Yeah, Brathwaite, he's, he's a really good performer for Denmark. He gets a little bit of stick because he's at, he's at Barcelona. And maybe that's a little bit beyond his level in some ways. But he's still a really, really good player. And a good foil for whoever he plays up front with. Well, everyone up for Denmark. Ball into the box. Stones with a good header away. But it will be another throw to the Danes. Pretty much down by the uh, corner flag. I require barking out the orders. First change then for England. 3-4 Denmark. Grealish has gone to sleep there. Vass to Hoiberg. Hoiberg's touch wasn't the best, but back out to Vass. Vass digs out across. It's away by Rice. Andres Christensen, who had quite heavy strapping on his uh, thigh come hamstring before he even got that top-up um, moments ago. His... Uh, back and seems to be moving well. Mason Mount is receiving some instructions from uh, Gareth Southgate. We've not mentioned that either yet. He was involved in the Euro <laughs> semi-final as well once upon a time, wasn't he? Gareth Southgate as uh, Shaw prepares to take this throw. Bit static from England. The Danes are asking the question. Is it going to be a turnover? He's got to release it eventually. Eventually Harry Kane comes back and it's uh, a toe in there by Denmark player. Pickford... Uh, Controls it. It must be an England touch because he was pretty uh, keen to keep that ball in. He's saying movement, movement, movement to the men in front of him because they have been static at times. A man for in a red shirt, Paulson it is, who's just pulled off and found a bit of space. England just going to sleep in the last uh, couple of minutes. Maybe those changes. Mainly from Denmark, aren't they, really? But just upset the rhythm. Yeah, we had that delay with Christensen's injury uh, as well. Then the triple change, then Drew Grealish claim on, and it has just uh, broken up the rhythm, and, and Denmark have benefited from that. Grealish, first run, foul by Vass. Will that be a yellow card? Grealish, that's the question. Yeah, you don't get away with those ones, do you? <laughs> yeah, there's, there's not much contact, is there? But he knows what he's doing, Daniel Vass, and, and just leans into uh, Jack Grealish and, and nudges him to the floor and particularly in the second half yeah, there, there are always yellow cards in the second half you maybe get away with it in the first but but not after the half time break yeah stop at source was the phrase that came to uh, mind as soon as Grealish uh, uh, took off there again having a chat with Mason Mount about the positioning England's number seven Luke Shaw will take this uh, free kick although Grealish is uh, happy to give him the option Socks rolled round his ankles as ever. 18 minutes or so left on the clock. England won Denmark one. Luke Shaw's ball in towards the back post. Vestergaard is with the header away. Calvin Phillips on the right-hand side. Sterling's made a run to the right. And Mount picks it up short into the feet of Sterling. Sterling can't quite control, but uh, tired there by Denmark. I thought Greenish picks up the second and goes off on one of those Trey Bart runs, but passes behind Declan Rice, who does well to retreat and find Harry Kane. Kane. Crossfield ball finds Mason Mount. Kane will get himself into the box. Mount down the right-hand side. Clips it towards the back post. And Shamichael, safety first approach, the right approach as well. Under his crossbar, tips it over. Yeah, he's backpedalling there. A Kasper Schmeichel. Mount trying to stand it up towards the far post. It's too much slice on it, really. So it ends up angling towards the goal. And I think it was dropping in. So Kasper Schmeichel did the right thing to just turn it over the top. Yeah, well played by a 34-year-old. Uh, Jack Grealish. Right edge of the box. Mason Mount. Into Sterling. He turns. Vestergaard blocks with his thighs, I think. Falls to his knees and gets the block in. Calvin Phillips, if you meant that, what a pass that is. Ball in uh, over his shoulder and finds Declan Rice outside of his right foot. Kane now into the box. Goes down. Is that a penalty kick? Danny McKayley goes the other way. Calls it a dive. They'll check it. I have to say, Tom. The fall didn't convince me. He's gone down clutching his right leg, hasn't he, Harry Kane? He certainly goes down... Maybe not theatrically, but he goes down quite, you know, obviously to everyone. Players from both teams are now surrounding the referee. It's Norgard with the challenge. He does go That's across. That's a penalty Kane, kick, I, I think. think it is, yeah. Norgard steps across Harry Kane. Who gets the touch and yeah, the penalty and kick. and he goes down. It's just inside the area. I'm not sure what the referee was, was giving, whether he thought Kane had dived or whether he thought there was a foul earlier on. But VAR will definitely check this. I didn't think uh, the fall wasn't a natural one, I didn't think. And he's given a free kick. I can only think that is for a foul from Kane. I think he might have been on Delaney before he latched on to Norga, but I didn't, myself, I didn't see a foul there. <laughs> that is a clear and obvious error <laughs> to use the phrase, isn't it? I, didn't, I thought it was. I thought he went down too early, but he gets a touch away from Norgard, and Norgard comes across him, whether it's intentional or not. 
Ooh, that's a controversial moment as Mailer back in play on the left hand side. Phillips tackles him. Mailer gets it away though to Vestergaard. Vestergaard just angles it forward. Well, we've seen the, <laughs> the VAR it says check over now, but the play's already gone on. It's just a strange way the officials have acted there. Do uh, you think they would have given themselves a bit more time? Yeah, it, it didn't seem a, a, an obvious one that they could, you know, make a decision within the space of 30 seconds like they did. It was Paulson Kane initially challenged with. I didn't think there was a foul there. And then, as you say, Norgard surely brought Kane down in the area. We'll see if we can get an explanation on, on that, if possible. But, but no penalty and... You know, depending on which way this game ends up going, that could be a hugely controversial moment. Yeah, Hoiberg sweeps it wide to Daniel Vass on the right-hand side, just inside uh, English territory. Now, Andres Christensen, the elegant way, moves with the ball, just comes forward and plays a 1-2 with uh, Norgard. He must have breathed a sigh of relief there, the, the Brentford man. Maguire heads up in the air. Shaw will turn. And, uh, well, he's balled down the line. There's uh, going to be a throw. I've noticed Gareth uh, Southgate's not gone straight for the iPad, <laughs> which is normally <laughs> the reaction of referee uh, managers when those kind of situations uh, occur. Vass with the throw in, level with the right edge of the box for uh, England. Vass receives it off Paulson. Delaney controls with his right foot through the legs of Paulson, but he shows nice footwork to keep the ball. Norgard, now Vass back to Christensen. Hoiberg's just dropped in to the back uh, three. one all. 14 minutes left. Christensen, of course, Italy awaiting in uh, Sunday's final. Catch that on this service. 8 o'clock kickoff as Delaney steps over and whips the ball towards the back post. Carl Walker lets it bounce. Mailer will make his life difficult. The ball has gone, though. It will be a goal kick. And Roll is catching our breath. Yeah, we probably need to. It's been a very action packed second half, hasn't it? Considering we haven't had any goals uh, since the restart, it's been really entertaining stuff and we're reaching that time I thought it five or ten minutes ago we were getting to that nervy stage where perhaps when there was the break in play of Christensen's injury both sets of players might have looked up at the screen saw the time and are starting to think we're reaching that kind of next goal the winner territory which can make players tense up and can make it very nervy and I feel like that might be starting to set in. Christensen wins the header ahead of Kane but he only forced to Declan Rice now Cal Walker can come forward on the right hand side he's got Sterling just down the line Rice is now making the run trying to break the line Sterling drops off receives it goes past one Norgard good tackle by him and Hoiberg can break he's got Paulson and Brathwaite ahead of him Maguire steps in strong challenge then knocks it long finds Grealish does it the one of maybe a foul on Christensen or potentially Brathwaite I didn't think it was a bit loose uh, Maguire's uh, challenge Christensen's gone down you got to think the change is coming. I think his day is done. If memory serves, I'm pretty sure he was uh, taken off late in the Czech Republic game with an injury to his leg, which is the, the, what's been causing him problems during this second half. Joachim Anderson uh, came on at the weekend, so I would expect the man who spent last season on loan at Fulham to, to replace Andreas Christensen uh, fairly shortly. Just wondering about the penalty appeal as well. I'm wondering if the decision has been made. Maybe Kane kicked the back of Norgard as Norgard stepped across, and that's the decision. I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to get a, a, a viewpoint uh, where, where I can, but I think that might be what the decision is. But that didn't happen. Norgard <laughs> came across Kane as he was going for. Like, let's be honest, Kane's looking for it, isn't he? I think that's probably what the the downfall from England point of view is. But. Norgard, he took a risk and maybe fortune was on his side. Joachim Anderson, you call it, uh, Tom. Excellent season for Fulham. Still at Leon. Tottenham have looked at him, haven't they? I think there'll be a few suitors if he's not going to get a regular game at Leon. I thought he was excellent, like I say, for uh, the Cottagers, captain them for long stages of the uh, second half of uh, the season two. And uh, Harry Kane will just throw it back to the Danes, or, well, via Jack Grealish, I hope. Yes. <laughs> they were toying with us yeah, there, weren't they? He took a step, Grealish. <laughs> Definitely yeah. thought about the shot from 40 yards. <laughs> I was once playing in a school match where someone did that. We meant to kick it back and scored. <laughs> and uh, the referee was just like, no, we can't have that. <laughs> and, um, Luke Short, was he fouled by Delaney? Yes, he was. Free kick to England just inside uh, Danish territory. 11 minutes left of the game, of the 90. Bit of pushing and shoving going on here. Danny McKayley is just going to tell everyone to calm down. I think he may even have a word. Norgard and Mason Mount, is it? I yeah, I'm not sure what they were um, 
what well, that was all about. There was a little bit of push in between the pair as they made their way back into position. Again, it's just the, the tension that's building of the occasion. Yeah, so many nerves out there. Grealish now turns inside, skips past one, fouled forward to Mason Mount. Play on, no one in the box from out, but Sterling on the uh, back stick. Shaw, low ball in away by Kier. Excellent positioning once again. Phillips goes for goal. Always going wide, though. Thought about asking for a corner kick. That's a bit of a, a wince, though. He knew always wide. Still, England won their mat one. Into the closing stages of the 90 minutes still. Nothing to separate England and Denmark. It's 1-1 one, one at Wembley. England, though, thought they were going to be awarded a penalty a few minutes ago. It certainly looked like Christian Norgaard, the Denmark substitute, brought Harry Kane down in the area. But referee Danny McKayley gave a free kick to Denmark instead. And VAR had a look and agreed with the on-field decision. Seems a little bit strange and all truth. And perhaps Denmark have got away with one, but the penalty wasn't given and it remains England 1, Denmark 1. Yeah, and Denmark rolling around nicely on the edge of the box. Delaney has to be careful. Rice almost tackled him. Back to Joachim Anderson. First touch for him. Puts his head down. Looks to hit the line towards Brathwaite. The ball though, only finds touch. Kasper Hulman with his arms out. Outstretched once more from his team. Four changes he's made now. Got one more left in the 19. You get an extra one in extra time as well. Shaw will take this through. Again, static England. Phillips the only one moving. Declan Rice goes short. Phillips again. Grealish is making a run. Eventually Harry Kane steps in and goes on a, a run left to right. Finds a Mason Mount. He and Grealish seem to be interchanging left and centrally. Grealish now edge of the box. Can't quite get the ball from Shaw under his spell. Norgard away. Cal Walker thought about it, but Mailer showed good pace to get in. Goes forward. Three on three for Denmark. He didn't control it. No Brathwaite. Miscontrols and Mount bring, comes again. Real nice end-to-end -end feeling about this. Mason Mount tackled well by Thomas Delaney. No, not according to uh, Danny McKaylee. And uh, Delaney throws his uh, arms up in the air in frustration. I tend to agree with him too. Yeah, certainly with his feet, he definitely won the ball. Was there some grappling with Mason Mount as well? Minimal grappling, maybe. That's probably what the referee's given the, the free kick for. He's had a few fouls. Thomas Delaney's been flirting with that disciplinary tightrope. But I'll tell you one man who didn't agree, it was his manager, Kasper Hulmund. Yeah, eight minutes or so left of the 90. England won, Denmark won. Independent off tube studio commentary free kick to the three Lions. Line on the edge of the box for Denmark. Luke Shaw, one arm up, whips it in. Doesn't beat the first man. It finds Declan Rice, though. No John Stones even. Just going wide, glancing header. Yeah, difficulty was coming back away from the goal, John Stones, and almost falling off balance as he as he made contact with the header. And it's going to be very difficult, even if he made decent contact with that, to beat Kasper Schmeichel from there. Not the best delivery, really, in, in all truth. Uh, from Luke Shaw, but we are, you know, into the final eight minutes plus stoppage time of the 90. It's now the time for, for somebody to step up and be a hero, and hopefully if that does happen, it is someone being a hero rather than someone being the pantomime villain. Yeah, exactly, as uh, ball long, well controlled by Poulsen. He's looked sharp since coming off the bench. Hoiberg's told to go left to Mailer by Delaney, finds Mailer back now to Hoiberg. He'll keep going right up until the 120 if he needs to. Vestergaard now. Norgaard added a bit of extra composure in the middle of the park for the Danes. Hoiberg into Poulsen. Who shimmies away from John Stones, but Stones sticks to his task. Hoiberg now will switch the play only to Jack Grealish, who tries to chest control. Anderson can just prod it away from him. Poulsen, nice chest control by him. Norgaard. Delaney inside right position to Vass. Hugging that touchline, 30 yards out. Denmark going right to left as we look at it. Independent off tube studio commentary. Kier. Joachim Anderson for the chance to play Italy, of course, in the final. They went to penalties. Will we or will someone be a hero like Tom says? They were discussing, remember, silver goal, Tom, on the TV the other day. I imagine how nervous that would have been when they used to have that. If golden goal wasn't bad enough as here comes uh, Poulsen. Delaney, Denmark coming on strong, Delaney turns onto his left foot, dinks it towards the back post, no red shirts though, and Jordan Pickford coolly and calmly just lets it go out for a goal kick. Yeah, fizzled out a little bit in the end, I think Delaney might be a little bit right in asking uh, why the three Danish players in the box all went to the front post as he was cutting in, the only real angle he had for the cross was to, to find the far, we, Denmark's 
ventures forward are, are growing fewer and further between uh, since they made the change. It was a defensive one, that, that triple alteration, particularly with Norgard coming on for Dahlberg. And it's allowed England to take the ascendancy somewhat, but there is still, of course, that threat on the counter-attack for Denmark, and particularly if they can get Paulsen and, and Brathwaite working in tandem. Pickford goes long, well headed away by Kier, who, although he scored an own goal, has been excellent this evening. Delaney, Maguire steps in, fouled by Paulsen. And the free kick will be given to uh, England. Paulson apologises. I think it's your first one, so you get away with that. And uh, a free kick just inside England's half, or the uh, the home side, or I suppose the playing at Wembley. I can't quite remember what there are. They are on the uh, the official uh, UEFA site. As uh, Sterling will roll it back to walking out. The Manchester City man wants the option. Has to go back to uh, Jordan Pickford though. Into the final five minutes of the 90. Pickford which isn't the best. He finds Maguire who lets the ball roll across his body. Far calmer than me, I have to say. Shaw into Maguire. Nice one, two between those two. And now Grealish sets off. Anderson's making life difficult for him. Cuts back Grealish and finds Walker. England got a bit of nice momentum behind this move. Sterling now on the right-hand side. Mason Mount, Harry Kane in the middle of the park. As is Grealish. Central position. Tries to slide it through to Mount. Well read, though, by Hoiberg. Cuts it out and floats a nice ball to Poulsen. Brathwaite up with him. Goes long, looking for Brathwaite. John Stones reads the space and heads it away. Norgard now will pick up the seconds. Vass flicks it back to Joachim Anderson. Four minutes or so left. One all will get plenty of stoppage time, I imagine, too. Just looking at uh, Gareth Southgate and Steve Holland. They don't look in any rush to make a further change, do they? I wonder if they're looking for a wave of fresh legs, maybe, and extra time if it comes. Quite possibly. Gareth Southgate tends to... Um not make too many substitutions, does he? Two or three per match, really, so far in this tournament. I wonder if Raheem Sterling's maybe not been involved in this second half. Fresh legs in the final third for him, perhaps, and maybe uh, fresh legs in the middle of the park as well with Jordan Henderson coming on. But for the time being, as you say, he doesn't look in a rush to make any changes. Paulson dinks it in away by Stones, then Maguire. The seconds fall to Paulson. Norgard forward ball, looking for Delaney, who's certainly taken on a more or taken on a more advanced role since those changes for Denmark were made. Grealish in the corner, trying to win a free kick. Still not gone out. He gets it away. Everyone falls over in the corner flag. Paulson can he keep it in? All eyes on the uh, assistant. And it's a corner kick to Denmark. Yeah, I actually think that ball might have gone out. The assistant was almost on the floor because he had bodies in front of him. Grealish and Delaney had gone down. So I think he's had to guess there. The official Delaney, who looks completely out on his feet, is, is still rather wearily making his way to his feet. But it is a Danish corner again. We make references it with the last set piece they had. They have that aerial advantage. They're going to make their fifth and final change of the, the regulation 90. And it's uh, another one of the, the Brentford brigade uh, with Matthias Jensen coming on. And that is Delaney's race run. Yeah, Delaney looked tired there. Did he has looked leggy maybe in the last 10 minutes and the call been made. Jensen comes on, the 25-year-old from the Bees, ready for his first Premier League season. Would he have more joy before there? Vestergaard's up from the back here too. As is uh, uh, Anderson. They don't get any smaller, do they, the Danes? As uh, ball's whipped in by Vass. Vestergaard's there. So is John Stones in amongst that. There's a foul, though. Vestergaard, I think, is the guilty party. He's the one that uh, complained to the referee and picked out by uh, the TV cameras. Usually the case, isn't it? Seeing it again, Tom. Um, yeah, maybe just a hand on the shoulder of Stones. Yeah, I think it's probably more John Stones slips, mm. uh, but Vestergaard did have his hand on him. The referee's seen that and thinks, oh, he's, he's brought him to the ground. And, you know, nine times out of ten, they're, they're going to give free kicks in those situations. So, yeah, that kind of helped England out because, you know, every time Dan Denmark get a, a set piece, there is that, that nervy tension around Wembley. Yeah, nerves ringing around Wembley, you imagine. Unofficial off tube studio commentary. And it's 90 seconds of the 90 minutes remaining. England won, Denmark won. Maguire just inside, or just off the 18-yard line, his own 18-yard box, finds that Luke Shaw. Phillips is in space in the middle. Declan Rice wants it. Phillips has it, and he'll roll it wide to uh, Walker. Rice can break forward, maybe. Hoiberg makes life difficult. Sterling comes inside. Now Phillips opens his body up and finds Rice. Rice uh, looks inside to Sterling. Phillips is the man, Walker now, good defence again by Denmark, really well set up this evening, Sterling, lets him run across his body, Norgard, 
wide to Stones now. Shaw, he's got Jack Greenish on the left-hand side. You can see the bodies at Wembley starting to rise whenever he gets the ball. Shaw thinks about the cross, goes on a dart himself. Still going Luke Shaw, fires it into Harry Kane, wants a second ball. It may fall to Declan Rice. Rice picks it up ahead of Mailer. Mailer knew he couldn't touch him, would have been a penalty kick. Rice tries to dance his way around Mailer. Mailer sticks to his task, walking out. 30 yards out, finds Kane dropping deep again. Phillips will work it to Shaw. Very narrow at the moment for England. Happy to defend this of the Danes. Phillips floats it wide. Well played by Mailer, who uh, comes across. Nods it out for a throw in the Danish left-back area to England. Yeah, every single outfield player there was within the width of the, of the penalty box, weren't they? It became very narrow, that attack for England. Who, as we approach the 90-minute marker, of the team pushing on. Yes, Harry Maguire. Uh, Luke Shaw, rather. Six minutes have been uh, added on. I thought we'd get a bit, but that seems a bit much for me as uh, Walker steps inside. Square ball, it's Greenish. Can he get the shot away? He's got Shaw making a run to his left. Shaw dinks the ball towards Walker. Harry Kane brings it down. Kane, can he get the shot away? He's going across the goal at the moment. Cuts, turns back inside. Well played by Mail, who's been excellent this evening defensively. Questions have been asked of him. During the tournament, he's played really well this evening. Hoiberg will just float it away. It's over the shoulder of uh, Declan Rice. Out for a throw just inside England's half. Well, I was going <laughs> At the moment when you don't want to do a foul throw is then Declan Rice definitely did a foul throw, but they don't give them these days, do they? <laughs> no, they don't. But what it does show is the, 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 the mindset of England. They're pushing, trying to find a winning goal now, aren't they? Boyd on, you'd imagine, by the majority of the, of the Wembley crowd. And Denmark, for the first time, really, looked like they, they might be just holding on and desperate to see uh, the whistle go for extra, to take us to extra time. Yeah, well, you feel that one side is going to get a clear-cut chance. Sterling on the right-hand side. Rice makes a run ahead of him. Phillips holds the midfield as Walker... Has it in space. John Stones almost plays the middle one in the back three at the moment. Denmark are that deep. Short. He's got Phillips inside him if he wants to use him. Takes his time there, Luke Short. Still on the ball. Phillips now. All of the outfield players in that Danish half. England going right to left. Do you want to picture it? It's unofficial off team studio commentary. Phillips into Harry Maguire now. Again, really good defending by the Danes. So well set up. Everyone knows the jobs. Phillips goes forward towards Declan Rice, who is hanging off the shoulder of Mailer, looking to maybe get a, an advantage in the air as Walker makes a run forward, but Mason Mount finds Sterling instead. Good ball by Sterling to Walker. Rice is making a run forward. Vestergaard is his opponent. Walker just plays it in. He was off balance. So difficult for the Manchester City man. Looking for Raheem Sterling. Denmark can break. Paulson, great challenge, Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw then fouled by Paulson as well. And a free kick central position. And McKayley again on the spot. Shaw takes it quickly, but too quickly. I think maybe five yards or so ahead of where the foul actually took place. Yeah, you can, you can get away with that when it's in your own half, but not when you're in an attacking position. But great work from Shaw. He spotted the counter-attack was potentially on as England take a quick free kick. Yeah, Sterling down the right-hand side. Whips it across. Mailer just did enough there. He'd gone to sleep. He was doing his laces. It was spotted by Shaw. Sterling got the ball in, but Mailer just about did enough. The Atalanta man. Schmeichel will clear with his left foot. Doesn't make 30 yards from his own goal, though. Mount. Good energy, steps in front of his uh, opponent. Sterling inside, Vestergaard almost in enough. Sterling back towards the penalty spot. Oh, it was Grealish's ball to hit there. Kane to go off his feet. Phillips left foot is shot over the crossbar. That was a goal for me there, Tom. If he, if he leaves it to Grealish, it's Chiesa all over again. Yeah, he was setting up for Grealish to curl that one towards goal. Whether he didn't get a shout, whether Harry Kane pulled rank there but he does take it off the toe Grealish you can see Grealish had his arms stretched out he was disappointed not to get the chance in the end uh, Phillips with a, a rather wild swing of the left boot from the edge of the area but England pushing on still just under three minutes of stoppage time remaining this is a really big moment because you imagine if we get to extra time Denmark will get the second win the psychological advantage of, of getting through the, the 90 minutes but at the moment it is all England yeah it gives England all the momentum behind them like you say but that five minutes or so Gives him a chance to refuel, get the energy levels up as well, get a few words of encouragement from Caspi Hulman as well. Long clearance by Schmeichel. Stones picks up the seconds, clears down the line. Harry Kane controls nicely with his left foot. Vestergaard, he looks tired to me, dives into the challenge, then fouls Harry Kane. It wasn't much of a foul, but Vestergaard looks so leggy at the moment. 
he gives himself away, I thought. Yeah, he almost deserved to give away the foul just because of how poor his initial attempt was to beat Kane, who just skipped past him with ease. Great control and footwork from Kane, but then as soon as he feels any contact on him, he knows he's got no support. All he can do is hope for a free kick, goes down. It's not a free kick, really, but it's been given. Yes, uh, <laughs> a few of the England fans see themselves in the... Uh, the stadium screens Mason Mount with the uh, free kick for England. Phillips again patrols the edge of the box. Nerves around Wembley. Deep ball. Maguire with the header again. More comfortable save this time for Schmeichel. The ball was uh, fading in its trajectory as it came into his hands. Just diving to his right hand side. I would say that was the, the save of an experienced goalkeeper who knew he could probably buy a few seconds from that as well yeah it felt like he, he was kind of set for a more difficult save and in the end he was just relieved that he could just fall on the ball and as you say eat up a few more seconds yes yeah, so it's a Denmark throw on the halfway line one minute of the six remaining Declan Rice couldn't quite keep it in he's uh, having a go at somebody I think uh, Denmark happy to take the time out the game Vass will take the throw Kasper Hulmund what a job he's done, you have to say. As uh, such a, well, it doesn't need to be talked about, but such a difficult start to the tournament. And in fact, again, takes his foot off the ball, but that might buy him a few seconds as Brathwaite dives in. Vestergaard then makes a better tackle this time. Hoiberg thinks it forward towards Poulsen. Comes to John Stones. All eyes on Danny McKayley, the referee. We've almost played the six as Hoiberg just hoists it into the stands for a throw. Will England have a chance to take it? The referee looks pretty unmoved at the moment. England in no rush, though. Walker, will he wind up for one last uh, go? Put the ball into the box. Maguire's up there. You get the feeling being told this will be the last play. Walker spins it his right hand. Delivers towards John Stone. Stone wins it. Comes to Phillips on the edge of the box. Nods it back to Walker. Needs to put it into the box. Phillips turns. That's exactly what he does. Decent ball inflicted on by Maguire. Well played by Daniel Vass. Let the ball run across his body. Still no whistle. Jack Grealish now left hand side of the box. Back to Mason Mount. Digs out across. It's away. No, it's not. It's back to Grealish. Grealish level the situation out. Finds Harry Kane. Blocked by Simon Kerr. Excellent all evening. The whistle goes. England won. Denmark won. We're heading to extra time. Join us shortly for another 30 minutes of action. 30 minutes and a Simon Kerr own goal. He turned a Bakaya Saka's cross into his own net. Made it 1 1 on 39. Chances for both teams during the second half. Harry Kane felt he should have had a penalty uh, during the second period as well when he went down under a challenge by Christian Norgard, but a free kick to Denmark was given rather than the expected England penalty. England finished the second half the stronger of the two teams, but it's anyone's guess who is going to... go on and reach the final end of the 90 minutes is England won Denmark won extra time will be needed to separate these two sides to decide who will be facing Italy in the European Championship final both goals coming during the first half Mikael Damsgaard's free kick putting Denmark in front on 30 minutes and a Simon Kier own goal he turned a Bakaya Saka's cross into his own net made it 1-1 on 39 chances for both teams during the second half Harry Kane felt he should have had a penalty uh, during the second period as well when he went down under a challenge by Christian Norgard but a free kick to Denmark was given rather than the expected England penalty England finished the second half the stronger of the two teams but it's anyone's guess who is going to go on and reach the final join us at the end of the 90 minutes, it's England 1, Denmark 1 extra time will be needed to separate these two sides to decide who will be At the end of 90 minutes, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The match is going to extra time to decide who will face Italy in the Euro 2020 final on Sunday. Both goals came during the first half. Mikel Damsgaard's superb free kick put Denmark in front on 30 minutes. An own goal from Simon Kier, the Denmark skipper who turned Bakaya Saka's cross into his own net, made it 1-1 one, one on 39. Both sides had chances during the second half. Harry Kane felt he should have had a penalty for England when he went down under a challenge from Christian Norgard. 
in the area, but to the surprise of everyone, the referee gave a free kick to Denmark rather than an England penalty. Second half, uh, extra time coverage is coming up shortly. At the end of 90 minutes, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The match is going to extra time to decide who will face Italy in the Euro 2020 final on Sunday. Both goals came during the first half. Mikel Damsgaard's superb free kick put Denmark in front on 30 minutes. An own goal from Simon Kier, the Denmark skipper who turned Bakaya Saka's cross into his own net, made it 1-1 on 39. Both sides had chances during the second half. Harry Kane felt he should have had a penalty for England when he went down under a challenge from Christian Norgaard in the area but to the surprise of everyone the referee gave a free kick to Denmark rather than an England penalty second half and extra time coverage is coming up shortly at the end of 90 minutes it's England 1 Denmark 1 the match is going to extra time to decide who will face Italy in the Euro 2020 final on Sunday both goals came during the first half Mikel Damsgaard's superb free kick put Denmark in front on 30 minutes an own goal from Simon Kier the Denmark skipper who turned Bakaya Saka's cross into his own net made it 1-1 on 39 both sides had chances during the second half Harry Kane felt he should have had a penalty for England when he went down under a challenge from Christian Norgaard in the area but to the surprise of everyone the referee gave a free kick to Denmark rather than an England penalty second half and extra time coverage is coming up shortly at the end of 90 minutes, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The match is going to extra time to decide who will face Italy in the Euro 2020 final on Sunday. Both goals came during the first half. Mikel Damsgaard's superb free kick put Denmark in front on 30 minutes. An own goal from Simon Kier, the Denmark skipper who turned Bakaya Saka's cross into his own net, made it 1-1 on 39. Both sides had chances during the second half. Harry Kane felt he should have had a penalty for England when he went down under a challenge from Christian Norgaard in the area but to the surprise of everyone the referee gave a free kick to Denmark rather than an England penalty second half and extra time coverage is coming up shortly at the end of 90 minutes, it's England 1, Denmark 1. The match is going to extra time to decide who will face Italy in the Euro 2020 final on Sunday. Both goals came during the first half. Mikel Damsgaard's superb free kick put Denmark in front on 30 minutes. An own goal from Simon Kier, the Denmark skipper who turned Bakaya Saka's cross into his own net, made it 1-1 on 39. Both sides had chances during the second Right, we'll just draw that one to a quick conclusion because extra time is getting underway in the Euro 2020 semi-final between England and Denmark. Nothing to separate these two nations after 90 minutes at Wembley. One apiece. The scoreline, Mikel Damsgaard putting Denmark in front on the half-hour mark. Simon Kier own goal drawing England level just nine minutes later. It's myself, Tom McGarry and Jack Ogilby who will be talking you through this game until a conclusion, whether that comes at the end of extra time or following penalties England did end the second or the latter part of the second half on top with the side certainly in the ascendancy but Jack do you think we mentioned towards the end of that second half as well if Denmark could get two extra time then they might get a, a boost themselves so we're just having a, a slight delay at the start of this uh, uh, opening period of extra time whilst the referee Danny McKayley goes and has a word with the fourth official who's now having a word with a uh, a uh, suited man uh, behind the technical area. I'm not 100% sure what this delay is about, in all truth. But it was, I wonder if it's just, is there too many substitutes affecting... Uh, the, the gesture Danny McKelly made with his two fingers up and as if they were crossing, almost like his vision was... It was making his life difficult when he's looking across the pitch because there's maybe too many subs. I'm not quite sure, I have to say. Quite possibly, because the Denmark players, yes, they're wearing bibs and uh, tracksuit tops, but they have still got the red shorts and socks on show, which at a glance... Uh, could potentially distract the referee and the, the players actually out there as well. Denmark have a throw. They're going from left to right at the, in this first period of extra time. Ball lost, though, by Christian Norgaard. Calvin Phillips has it for England. A little bit loose with his pass in the middle, but Declan Rice will pick it up inside the centre circle. Finds Kyle Walker back in towards John Stones. And now Jaime Maguire being pressed by Brathwaite. Plays it forward towards... Calvin Phillips, Luke Shaw now down the left-hand channel, his attempted ball was cut out by Vass, England, who only made one change uh, during the regulation 90, Denmark made all five of theirs, although they do now have an extra sixth one uh, during extra time, but England, who brought on Jack Grealish for Bakaya Saka, it now looks like Jordan Henderson and Phil Foden are both going to enter the fray. Yeah, looks so, doesn't it? Uh, I imagine Phil Foden for Raheem Sterling, maybe, and well, Henderson will definitely come on forever. Rice or Phillips. Rice looks a bit tired, I have to say. Phillips may play with a bit more control, 
but Rice also gives you that, I suppose, that drive in midfield, doesn't he? Yeah, he's, he's the, the, the more defensive of the two, although they are both defensively minded, as can be Henderson. But I, I, I like you, I think he has just looked a little bit laboured over the last 10 minutes or so as Jack Grealish draws a foul in the centre circle. And I think he wants Yusuf Paulson to pick up a yellow card. Hoiberg was involved as well. Well, it's Hoiberg with the initial foul, is it? I don't think... Paulson, maybe, maybe is a foul. He's got to be close to accumulation. Mm. For him. He's had four or five since he came on, uh, hasn't he, as uh, uh, Paulson. But uh, Greenish, very dangerous, but a note really, isn't it, that uh, the Danes, as soon as he gets the ball, straight away they're onto him. Yeah, he's the player who picks up the most fouls in the Premier League season in season now. That's a lovely ball around the corner by Walker to Kane, who gets a shot away, saved by Schmeichel. Greenish is coming in, but it's cleared away. Uh, by Joachim Anderson, really important defending from the Denmark substitute. England not done yet, though. Luke Shaw down the left-hand side, supported by Jack Grealish. Mason Mount there as well. Grealish works the ball into Declan Rice. Rice, 40 yards from goal, wants an option on the right-hand side, gets it from Walker. Now down the channel to Raheem Sterling, who may be about to come off, but he's dropped his shoulder into the penalty area. Sterling finds his route to goal, blocked by Vestergaard, who's gone down, might have been caught by Sterling with the follow-through. Kasper Hulman certainly appealing for a free kick. The Denmark number three is still down on the floor, holding his face. I think we are going to get a stoppage, so he'll be able to receive treatment, and we might get that double England change. Yeah, it's a, this clash of heads, isn't it? Uh, uh, Raheem Sterling and... Uh, Vestigal actually, Sterling's arms up in the air, there's not a lot he can do about it, his momentum is, like I say, there's not a lot he can do about it, but if Denmark go through, Kasper Schmeichel's right glove, I think, would be the man of the match, he's made four or five fabulous saves, say that one again, Kane does everything right, brilliant footwork by Schmeichel, he shifts himself down so well and so swiftly, and it was just agonising, it was that everyone was waiting for the ball to fall to anybody, and it was Joachim Anderson who... Uh, responded the quicker of anybody. Yeah, I mean, Harry Kane cannot do any more with that shot from the angle under pressure. He, you know, if he could pick it up himself and place it where he wanted to or aim it where he wanted to, it would have been low towards that corner, but Schmeichel with a big right hand made the save. You've called it Jack Declan Rice is the first player to be replaced. Jordan Henderson, who scored his first international goal against the Ukraine in the quarterfinal, has come on. We'll add some, certainly some extra experience in the middle for England and Phil Foden is also on but it's Mason Mount who is uh, being replaced so you'd imagine either Foden or Grealish will take up the central position behind Harry Kane or it might be the two interchanging yeah it'd be interesting to see how things uh, uh, work out Vestigard's back on his feet seems to be moving okay as well just uh, uh, rubbing his nose I think he'll be uh, okay now Southgate still looks pretty calm on the sidelines there's a heated discussion between Harry Kane and Simon Kier. It looks like Grealish from the left at the moment. Foden number 10. Yeah, interesting to see how, how that plays out. But Phil Foden, who hasn't featured in the knockout stages as of yet, he's on now and could be set to play an integral role. There's the ball launched forward there by Jordan Pickford for England, just on the two managers. I mean, Gareth Southgate and Kasper Hulman, the the two of the coolest characters really around. They've got that really calming influence, it would seem, on their teams, which is really shown through during very important occasions for both sides throughout this tournament. As Grealish down the left-hand side, Shaw makes an overlapping run. Grealish uses the left-back, who rides the challenge really well there, of Joachim Anderson. Vast does a decent job of then slowing Shaw up. He can't get an initial cross into the box. Instead, he interchanges passes with Phil Foden. Grealish involved as well down that left-hand side. Grealish has three Danish players around him. Foden now goes back towards Calvin Phillips. Again, Denmark doing a really good job of, of forcing England backwards and away from the edge of their own penalty area. Sterling now down the right-hand side finds Kyle Walker, who returns it to his fellow Manchester City man. Sterling now into Phil Foden, another of the City contingent, who returns it to Sterling. He goes down on the edge of the area, no foul. The baton is picked up, though, and the ball's floated towards the far post there by Jordan Henderson. It'll come to Luke Shaw, who tries to lift it back into the area. Hoiberg, with his hands behind his back, to make sure there can't be a possibility of handball, diverts it behind for a corner. Yeah, Vestergaard and uh, Sterling. <laughs> it's a free kick, I think, there. Vestergaard has got no into it. Vestergaard has given up now, hasn't he? He knows he doesn't have the legs to deal with Sterling. His body checks him, I thought, there. Uh, but uh, in the end, I think corners as good as England could have helped, uh, hoped for. Yeah, it's a, still a decent position. Maguire stones forward from the back. 
Again, in a tandem now of Harry Kane and Jordan Henderson towards the edge of the penalty area. Foden's assumed corner duties. Whips a deep one towards the far post. It's headed towards goal by John Stones. Diverted half clear. Comes back to Foden. Grealish on the edge of the area. Strikes towards goal. That ball was moving and Schmeichel takes no chances. Bats it away, but England will come again. Grealish once more into the penalty area. Taking on Daniel Vass. Pulls it back to Sterling, who steps away from the challenger, Jensen. It opened up for Sterling, but he lacked the composure with the finish. Yeah, not quite had the chance chances barring that great save from Schmeichel in the first half again it was just too tight for Sterling a decent effort by Grealish and I think Schmeichel was taken aback by just the movement and the pace of the ball did well to punch it away Denmark very very deep you feel England it sounds stupid to say obviously they need a goal but you think that the way the game is so stretched Denmark will get a chance yeah they absolutely they've got that pace on the counter-attack as well uh, particularly uh, with Brathwaite, there's always going to be an opportunity in this for both sides, at least one. As a free kick has been given on the right-hand side for England. Kyle Walker going down under the challenge of Christian Norgard. Walker himself takes the free kick quickly. Gets it back off Raheem Sterling. Infield it goes to Jordan Henderson. He'll have to wait until his 62nd cap to score his first international goal. He'll be hoping. England will be hoping they're, they're like buses and they come along uh, two in a row. But the time being, Grealish coming inside for England from the left-hand flank, flicks it back into the man I was just mentioning, Jordan Henderson. Now, Kyle Walker out to Sterling on the right-hand side. He looks like he might have uh, found a, a new lease of life, certainly a bit more energy in this extra time period. Looking to get hold of it once again, the man who's got three goals for England at this tournament so far. John Stones now across to Harry Maguire, and the pattern of extra time is, is set. England dominating the possession as they were towards the end of the Regulation 90 minutes with Denmark happy to sit in and, and play on the counter-attack, which they might get an opportunity of now as Foden has given the ball away. Schmeichel sends it long towards Paulson, who flicks it on, but Brathwaite was to his left. He went right, and England will settle for the throw on the halfway line. Yeah, taking quickly to Walker, but I think the, the pattern is set now, isn't it? Denmark, there's always one team who wants penalties more than the other, and Denmark seem pretty happy with their lot at the moment. England doing all the pressing and it's a case of just breaking down this red wall yeah England we, we know their notoriety with penalty shootouts but they did beat uh, Colombia at the last World Cup in the round of 16 uh, a stage of that tournament that Denmark exited the competition on penalties at the hands of Croatia as uh, Phil Foden for England down the right hand side supported by Jordan Henderson fresh legs get to the byline cross is cut out at the front post by Vestergaard and behind for another England corner yeah, two new men working well together there not much more Henderson could have done I don't think it was just away from him had to dig it out well played by Vestergaard, but uh, England, like we say, the momentum's with them at the moment. Yeah, and the supporters at Wembley are getting right behind the England team. The vast majority of the 60,000 supporting Gareth Southgate's side as Foden whips it into the near post, headed away by Daniel Vass, convincing header clear as well from one of the Danish substitutes. Walker has it on the halfway line. Finds Grealish, who's one of the deepest England players at the moment. Brings it off to Phillips before jogging into a more attack-minded position. Shaw now rather tentatively brings the ball forward. Sterling popping up on the left-hand side. Maguire and Phillips now exchanging passes. Again, Denmark very deep and very compact, making it difficult for England to, to play their way through, particularly with the, the tiring bodies out there. Henderson exchanging passes with Foden. Again, those two probably going to be crucial in this extra time period with the fresh legs they possess. Phillips rolls the ball back into... John Stones, who keeps the ball moving out to the right-hand flank. Henderson drops a shoulder, cuts in field. Takes a little bit of a risk, but he does come away with the ball. Eventually lays it off to Harry Maguire. All the play really happening just 10 yards or so inside the Danish half at the moment. Raheem Sterling will look to change that as he looks to take on Mailer down the... England right, and he just about gets the better of Mailer. He goes down in the area then under a challenge. England again claim for a penalty. England have a penalty. Daniel McKayley points to the spot. Denmark surround the official. Sterling brought down in the area. VAR will undoubtedly have a look, but as it stands, England have a golden opportunity to get in front. I might be about to make a very trivial point here, Tom. I think there was a second ball on the pitch. In the, in the top corner by the corner flag, there was something silver and spherical, and I don't know where it came from. It wasn't moving, suggests you had some weight. Again, that might be a very uh, trivial point. I think Mailer's 
seen it again. He isn't playing the ball. He's playing still. It's got to be a penalty, I think. I think it's the legs rather than a foot of Mailer that yeah. come together. He does try and pull out of it at the last moment. And again, you could argue Sterling has gone down easily. But I don't think this will be a decision that's overturned unless that second ball does come into play, of course, uh, Jack. But at the moment, England have a penalty. 12, nearly 13 minutes gone in extra time. Harry Kane surely will be the man to take the spot kick. He'll be up against Kasper Schmeichel. Still, there's a delay. This is a huge decision. No surprise that VAR are taking their time before making the call. Harry Kane has the ball in his hand still. Denmark appeal to the official. He can't really do anything about it at this stage. He's just got to take the advice of the VAR team who may ask him to come across and, and watch the pitch side monitor. But it looks like the decision is going to stand. Kane is placing the ball on the spot. The Danish players have moved away now. Uh, from the referee. The check is over. It is. I can confirm this is a penalty to England. So it's Harry Kane up against Kasper Schmeichel. Can he put England in front? 90 seconds away from half time in extra time. England won. Denmark won. Kane against Schmeichel. Wembley watches on with bated breath. Can England's ever reliable man, Harry Kane, put them in front. He sends it lower. It's saved by Schmeichel. Kane scores the rebound and England potentially have one foot in the European Championship final. Not a convincing penalty at all. Good save by Schmeichel. Down to his left-hand side, but no luck for the Leicester goalkeeper. It bounces out to Kane, who scrambles it home. Wembley goes crazy. England 2-1 up in extra time. Closing in on the end of the first period of extra time, and England now lead Denmark by two goals to one. They're in front for the first time on the night. Harry Kane, the scorer. It was a penalty that was given to England. Raheem Sterling brought down by Joachim Mailer in the area. The referee pointed to the spot. There was a lengthy delay whilst VAR confirmed the decision. The penalty was uh, given. Kane stepped up, sent it to Schmeichel's left. Schmeichel saved, but unfortunately for the Danish goalkeeper, it came straight back to Kane who made no mistake with his second chance, his second opportunity, his fourth goal of the tournament. And potentially, he could be sending England on their way to the Euro 2020 final. Yeah, well followed up, wasn't it, by Kane? He knew the way he struck it. So unfortunate for Schmeichel. He's been so good during this game. Diving to his left-hand side, Kieran Trippier couldn't look. The Atletico Madrid man sent out to warm up. The relief on Harry Kane's face. It was one of those. I, when he was standing up for that, Tom, I thought, Harry Kane never misses, but Casper <laughs> Schmeichel very rarely concedes. And uh, Schmeichel won the duel, but Kane got the uh, the rebound, grabbed the goal, and now it's uh, all on uh, Denmark. I think they may have sent Vestergaard right up front now for the final, uh, or the, the closing second. No, Jonas wins come on for Vestergaard. And, uh, well, a totally different look to this game now. Yeah, Vinder, a striker coming on. He did start the first match, I think, against Finland, but hasn't really featured since. So he's on the, the field of play now. He'll have about 15 minutes to uh, have an influence on the game. We've almost had a minute of stoppage time at the end of this first period of extra time. There was the delay with the penalty being awarded, so Denmark might get one last attack during this period, Hoiberg, oh, his ball's been picked off on the left-hand side. That's really good play by Kyle Walker, who's breaking forward with pace. He's got Kane, Foden and Grealish in support. Harry Kane has it, tracked by Norgard, fouled by Norgard, was he? Yes, says the referee. And there may just be time for England to muster another opportunity from this free kick. Yeah, it's, game management has been the phrase of this uh, tournament from those commentators, hasn't it? And that's exactly what Harry Kane did there. I thought Norgard made the good tackle, but... Kane went down, he took the sting out of the game, I suppose. Kieran Trippier will be coming on. The man described as a, a defensive animal by Gareth Southgate after the Croatia game. So, not a bad man to bring on. Yeah, I wonder. Raheem Sterling and a, a switch to a, a back three from England, maybe for the, for the second period of extra time. Uh, the mood in uh, Wembley, the England supporters are jubilant. Denmark looking rather sombre as England worked the free kick short. It's with... Phil Foden, we're having three minutes of stoppage time actually at the end of this first period of extra time. We've played two of those. Luke Shaw now for England, breaking towards the edge of the Danish penalty area before shifting it out to the left-hand side for Jack Grealish. We're again looking to commit defenders. 
Well, you're looking to hold it into the in the corner flag. He's eventually stopped by Daniel Vass, who hooks half clear. Maguire fails to control, but it'll ricochet. Well, it looked like it might ricochet towards Foden. It's picked off by the substitute wind. And now Norgard can turn for Denmark. 30 seconds of stoppage time remaining at the end of this first period of extra time. Denmark are going to have to throw the kitchen sink at England in these minutes that remain. Simon Kier being a pivotal man for Denmark at these finals in more than just what he's done on the football pitch. He's going to look to switch the play out towards the left-hand flank. It should be cut out by the head of John Stones and is. There'll be a throw-in for Denmark. Just about enough time for Mailer to take it. Flick down the line and Jensen helps it on to Joachim Mailer. The ball has it stayed in. No, the referee has pulled it back. He indicates throw-in. Still this first period of extra time goes on. Oh wait, now maybe the referee has looked that his wish will we're looking back at the penalty decision again it was the knee the right knee of Mailer just caught this side of Raheem Sterling's leg minimal contact Jack but enough for a penalty I suppose yeah the slow motion cameras don't do him any favours to the Mailer it's not a great penalty by Harry Kane but as soon as that ball bounces out he knows exactly what he's doing you look at him he's got his head down because he knows he has to hit it low and into the opposite corner a relief for Harry Kane and uh, England in the ascendancy. At the end of the first period of extra time, England lead Denmark by two goals to one. Harry Kane putting England in front for the first time this evening. It was a penalty. Raheem Sterling brought down by Joachim Mailer in the box. Kane actually missed the spot kick. Good save down to his left-hand side by Kasper Schmeichel. But the Tottenham forward, the England captain, was on hand to turn home the rebound from close range. England 15 minutes away from a European Championship final for the first time in their history. It's England 2 Denmark won. At the end of the first period of extra time, England lead Denmark by two goals to one. Harry Kane putting England in front for the first time this evening. It was a penalty. Raheem Sterling brought down by Joachim Mailer in the box. Kane actually missed the spot kick. Good save down to his left-hand side by Kasper Schmeichel. But the Tottenham forward, the England captain, was on hand to turn home the rebound from close range. England 15 minutes away from a European Championship final for the first time in their history. It's England 2, Denmark 1. At the end of the first period of extra time, England lead Denmark by two goals to one. Harry Kane putting England in front for the first time this evening. It was a penalty. Raheem Sterling brought down by Joachim Mailer in the box. Kane actually missed the spot kick. Good save down to his left-hand side by Kasper Schmeichel. But the Tottenham forward, the England captain, was on hand to turn home the rebound from close range. England 15 minutes away from a European Championship final for the first time in their history. It's England 2 Denmark won. At the end of the first period of extra time, England lead Denmark by two goals to one. Harry Kane putting England in front for the first time this evening. It was a penalty. Raheem Sterling brought down by Joachim Mailer in the box. Kane actually missed the spot kick. Good save down to his left-hand side by Kasper Schmeichel. But the Tottenham forward, the England captain, was on hand to turn home the rebound from close range. England 15 minutes away from a European Championship final for the first time in their history. It's England 2, Denmark 1. At the end of the first period of extra time, England lead Denmark by two goals to one. Harry Kane putting England in front for the first time this evening. It was a penalty. Raheem Sterling brought down by Joachim Mailer in the box. Kane actually missed the spot kick. Good save down to his left-hand side by Kasper Schmeichel. But the Tottenham forward, the England captain, was on hand to turn home the rebound from close range. England 15 minutes away from a European Championship final for the first time in their history. It's England 2 Denmark won. At the end of the first period of extra time, England lead Denmark by two goals to one. Harry Kane putting England in front for the first time this evening. It was a penalty. Raheem Sterling brought down by Joachim Mailer in the box. Kane actually missed the spot kick. Good save down to his left-hand side by Kasper Schmeichel. But the Tottenham forward, the England captain, was on hand to turn home the rebound from close range. England 15 minutes away from a European Championship final for the first time in their history. It's England 2, Denmark 1. We're back for the second half of extra time. Ooh, we have more. England leading at 2-1. Penalty will follow up from Harry, McGain, Harry Kane. Fourth for, uh, goal of the Euros for the England uh, captain. Uh, news of a change as well. Uh, and I 
brow raising one or two. Jack Grealish has been taken off, a sub himself, of course, and replaced by Kieran Trippier. Grealish was looked good as far as keeping hold of the ball. He thought that might be the, an attribute that Gareth Southgate would look to in this second half of extra time. But it looks like a back three Trippier down the right hand side, as they were against Germany. Um, but uh, after not getting on against Ukraine, I thought he did quite well actually, uh, Jack Grealish, when he did come on. It's uh, a bit of a dent to the confidence, you imagine. Yeah, and I'm sure Gareth Southgate, if he hasn't had a word yet, he will do at the end of the game. He, he wants to hold on to what he's got. As we were saying Ryan Sterling would be the man to come off because he's played the entirety of the game. But I suppose, in fairness to Sterling, he won the penalty. His pace on the counter-attack uh, could cause Denmark problems as they inevitably have to throw bodies forward. That would have been the, the obvious decision, to, though, to take Sterling off. But Gary Southgate isn't afraid to make the big calls. He's done that throughout this tournament, and he feels that's the right way to go. He's got the extra defensive player on. And we know Trippier does provide good defensive cover. Yes, free kick uh, against a uh, Danish player here. Danny uh, Makkeli, the referee, wants to have a word with somebody too. Potentially Kyle Walker, who hammered the ball away. Casper Hulman's just asking uh, if a bit of extra time is going to be uh, added on for that uh, infringement to the uh, Dutch linesman. Hulman still looks pretty calm, I have to say. As uh, England move it back to John Stones. Almost in that sweeper position, Jordan Pickford deep in take a breath there for me. First touch was not a great one. Hammers it clear, but it'd be uh, throwing deep in England's half to Denmark. I suppose what England need to avoid doing now is falling into the trap that Denmark did in getting so far deep that he's inviting the pressure. Yeah, it's amazing what a difference a goal makes. England will inevitably drop back. Denmark will control the play, which they haven't really done uh, since the early period of the of the second half. But uh, it's, yeah, it's going to be all Denmark. You know, we, we say we need England not to sit so deep, but they inevitably, you imagine, they will, and it'll be a bit of a defence against attack for these final 12 and a half minutes or so. Anderson's forward ball eludes uh, Brathway out for a goal kick. Nervous looking uh, Danish fans. It was roles reverse, wasn't it? Uh, Denmark going ahead through a super free kick from young Mikkel Damsgaard. Own goal, Sam and Kier um, was the equaliser before the break, then Harry Kane. Um, converting after missing a penalty in the first half of extra time. You do feel, though, the way this game has gone and the way last night's game went between Spain and Italy, that there are plenty of twists and turns to come. Absolutely. There'll be at least one big chance for Denmark. I was just looking. They've made all uh, six substitutes now, haven't they, with Jonas Vin coming on? I'm surprised it maybe wasn't Andreas Cornelius coming on to be the... the Route one option, if you like, the big man in the box when inevitably, if it remains 2-1, they're going to have to throw it into that kind of area. But maybe that's when they, they send a Simon Kier or, or someone like that up front for the final few minutes. Yeah, he featured heavily in the early start of the tour, early stage of the tournament as well, Cornelius, didn't he? Off the bench as uh, Hoiberg, his socks around his ankles now, finds pulse. A nice turn by the Leipzig man. Back to uh, Norgard. He just takes too much time. Sterling gets the tackle in, but Norgard will... Pick up the seconds, looks fully fit now after having his uh, championship campaign hindered by those injuries with Brentford. Preparing for a Premier League season as well. Jensen alongside him in the, the middle of the park for um, Denmark now. Another B's player as Hoiberg just gets in there ahead of Kane. And it will be a, a throw to Denmark. Hoiberg's been absolutely superb as well in the middle of the park for Denmark. We mentioned Schmeichel probably doesn't deserve to be on the losing team. I don't think he does either. In fairness, this is, it has to be a loser, doesn't they? And it's a bit of a cliche uh, to say, but you know, Denmark have put so much into this game. Both sides are, have been fantastic. It's been a, a really entertaining semi-final. A lot of the time, these kind of games are, are very tight and tense and, and pretty forgettable in a lot of ways, but, but this has been anything but that. Hoiberg has done everything that Hoiberg does well tonight, hasn't he? He's kept it simple, he's made his tackles. Every blade of grass has been his. He's, yeah, very impressive by the, the Spurs man as uh, Trippier just has to backtrack and down the line on the feet of Mailer. Anderson plays it forward to Poulsen. He's been bright since coming on. Thought about the shot there, didn't he, from a, a tight angle. Floated it towards Vass instead. Shaw half away. Hoiberg almost plays a right back now, I think. Uh, Hoiberg. Drops his shoulder down the right-hand side. Vass just tries to help him on. Foden's back there. Nodded back by Henderson. And Shaw will hook it away. Only for a, a throw, though, to Denmark on the uh, right-hand side as they attack. Level with the 18-yard line. 
Vass to take it. He's got a long delivery. Will he wind up? I think he will because Kier's in there. No, he goes back to uh, Anderson who maybe uh, thought he was going to be going forward. Floats it towards the back post. Poulsen's there. Trippier needs to be careful. Poulsen heads it up in the air and Walker will slam it clear. Only out for a throw though. England getting very, very deep. Second ball on the pitch. We've suggested that before, haven't we? This time it's uh, uh, stopped as uh, Mailer will take the throw. Nine minutes of the additional, the second batch of additional 15 on. The clock still to come. England leading Denmark 2-1, but Denmark the team on top as things stand. Shaw slides in, makes an excellent challenge, but Kier on the halfway line, he'll control. Hoiberg now. White boots, socks round the ankles. Intervind, couldn't find his touch. I thought he was going to slide it through to a teammate there, Tom. Yeah, it's probing from Denmark, isn't it? They just haven't quite been able to, to get into a, a really decent crossing position uh, as of yet. They're, they're binding their time. They're going to get chances, as we keep mentioning. It's, it's one-way traffic now since the... Uh, second period of extra time resumed. It's quite a dangerous game for England to play, but you can't criticise England either because every single team in the world would do this in their position. Yeah, Oyberg inside ball is just caught out by a, uh, a stretching Harry Maguire who's going across field, works it down the line. Kane can't control. It's all Denmark at the moment. Hoiberg again. Henderson finds uh, Sterling. Sterling will let the ball run under his feet. Then gets going. Mailer's trying to stick with him, but he can't. Great pace. Sterling still going. Sterling still going. Central position. Finds Kane inside the box. One shot on his left foot. Goes to the line. Tries to cut it back. No, it actually turns. Good play by Kane. Holding things up under pressure from Simon Kier, who again positioned excellent from the AC Milan defender. The Danish captain, of course. Now back in midfield, Carl Walker and Calvin Phillips, what a vote of confidence it is for Calvin Phillips as well, still to be on the field. He's uh, really come on during these championships, hasn't he? Trippier, down the line is Walker. Sterling's unmarked in the box. Rather than go direct, he heads to the corner though, Walker. Back to Trippier. Trippier will uh, visit towards Phillips. Maguire. Now uh, Short. Short. Kane. On the angle of the box, reverse ball to Shaw. Foden's in there, as is Sterling. Shaw just rolls it across. He'll get a second bite of the cherry as well. Rolls it back to Henderson, who uh, uh, rightly, I think, Nadi Bakayli uh, <laughs> waves away the protest. He waited for it and went down. Never a penalty kick, that one. Yeah, he gets to the ball first. It's just a natural coming together, though, isn't it, between Henderson and it might be Norgard, the, the player he was, he was challenging with. It was a hopeful look from Jordan Henderson, but England have already had one. Penalty given it in this first period of extra time, which probably was a penalty, but on the soft side, you would probably say. So I don't think there was any way the, the official was going to point to the spot there. No, I'm just having, has Jensen gone off as well for uh, uh, the Danes? I can't I'm not spot him in this, uh, the second half. Unless he's gone off injured. But injured, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because Denmark used all their six substitutes. Let's see if we can get clarification on that. No, I can't. I can't. I just can't see him at the moment. As Brathwaite turns, goes for goal. Scrambling was Pickford. Did he get a touch round the corner? Yes, corner kick. This is what Denmark won. They've got a big, big team. Need some good delivery here. Yeah, it's a really good turn from Brathwaite, isn't it? Not the cleanest of shots. Takes a, a deflection, I think, off John Stones, but a really good piece of goalkeeping from Jordan Pickford. He had one of those early in the second half against Dolberg. Again, down to his right-hand side. Takes no chances. Yes, cares up. Anderson's up. Vin's a big man too. Poulsen, all these players are six foot plus. Vass again, Denmark crowd round Jordan Pickford. Five and a half left of the second period of stopping extra time. Ball in, it's headed away. Harry Kane back there. Norgard, Mailer rather. He'll go across field to Hoiberg, who takes a safety first and sensible option. Nods it back to uh, Kasper Schmeichel, the only man in the Denmark half. Schmeichel now floats it forward. Maguire's up there, heads it away ahead of Brathwaite. Maguire has to be careful, of course, on that yellow card. Mailer, central position, finds it. Norgard. He's got Kier square and uh, Anderson. Kier drops the shoulder and shows a nice bit of pace, actually, to go away from Raheem Sterling. Mailer, Poulsen's just drawing wide. Rathwaite tries to flick it between his legs. Phillips gets in there, makes a tackle. Foden sets Kane away. Is he offside? It doesn't matter. Great play 
by Casper uh, Schmeichel and blocked, I think, by Harry Kane. Is that going to be a free kick? Yes, he was. I think he was offside anyway, Tom. Yeah, I think he, he possibly might have been. Schmeichel doing some good sweeper keepering uh, regardless and a definite handball uh, from Kane. I've just done a quick totting up. There's no confirmation anywhere, but, yeah, it looks like Denmark do only have nine outfield players there, and you spotted it. It looks like it's uh, Jensen, the substitute, who's had to go off, so must have picked up a, an unspecified injury, but it looks like Denmark are playing with ten. Yeah, ball into the box. Maguire heads it away to safety. Corner kick, though. Yeah, he only came on 88 minutes on the clock, didn't he? Uh, Jensen... Again, though, Denmark will look to put pressure on Pickford. Vass again, the man to take it. This looks like a more orthodox approach from the Scandinavians from this corner kick. Um, Kier and uh, Anderson on the penalty spot. Brathwaite, Vint, Paulson in there too. That is Norgard. Vass floats it towards the back post. Anderson goes up. It's Walker with the header away. Sterling makes up good ground to get away from Norgard. And now he can go forward. Being trapped by Mailer. Sterling tried to go inside rather than hit the line. Allowed Denmark to get back into the play. Mailer skips past uh, Trippier and uh, Sterling. Then Walker steps in. Excellent night this so far for Walker. Very, very good. Have a right back or as a right-sided centre-half. Then cuts it back to Harry Kane. Jordan Henderson's acres of space in the middle of the park. And he finds Kieran Trippier, who has one thing on his mind. That's head to the corner flag. Just over three minutes left of uh, the second Euro 2020 semi-final. A reminder, you can catch the final on this service Sunday evening, 8 o'clock. Phillips strokes it back to Walker. Stones right on the halfway line. We'll find Maguire in England just moving it along their defensive line. Shaw, Phillips forward ball. Anderson plays uh, Kane onside. Kane, getting down to walking pace. These players are exhausted. Shaw, Phillips again. Told to go across field, but goes back to Maguire. Right call. Maguire plays it towards Trippier. Trippier, cool as you like. Good man to bring on as he's Trippier in a situation like this. Little triangle between himself, Walker and Henderson. Then comes forward down the line. Sterling inside ball. Henderson finds Sterling. He goes towards the box. Foden unmarked on the penalty spot. Sterling can't quite get it out of his feet. Henderson will now take over and head towards the corner flag. No, Trippier, Foden, da, um, Norgard rather tried uh, to take the ball off him. Couldn't quite get it. Two minutes left of the additional 30. Stones, tired touch. That sums up the game because Denmark can't quite get there at the moment. Yeah, they're out on their feet, Denmark. They've been chasing shadows for the last couple of minutes. Really difficult with uh, a man light in this second period of extra time. They they made a good start to the second period, but this, as soon as England got a period of possession like they've got now, it's just so difficult for them to win the ball back. And credit to England, they're really running down the clock well. Yeah, you can see Kier, yeah, he's got cramp. Of, if the ball goes out, he'll need to, someone to stretch out his right leg, I think. As uh, Trippier and Sterling, I don't think I've much intention of letting that ball go out. As Henderson finds Foden. Foden turns and works it back to Henderson and just fizzes it back to Sterling. Almost in a right wing back position, Sterling. Phillips, cool as you like, the outside of his right boot, works it to Stones. Then Phillips all the way back to Jordan Pickford. He'll get it out of his uh, left button. Just drift it towards Luke Short. Kane now, just inside Denmark's half. In no rush to make it towards goal, though. The England skipper asking for support. Vass is there to try and take the ball off him. Back to Luke Shaw. Phillips. Ooh, that was a, a rare heavy touch by Phillips. He's passed back towards Shaw. Out for a throw. What can Denmark make of this? Just inside their own half. They need to go long, Tom. They do, yeah. I mean, England have wasted three or four minutes there with, with possession. But Denmark have a chance. 30 seconds. We might get a minute added on for stoppages at the end. I don't think we'll get more than that. So it, it's now or never territory for Denmark. England, a matter of seconds away from the European Championship final. Yeah. Floats it forward, looking towards Paulson. Paulson wins it. Maguire with the header. Stones has gone down, but he gets back up. Phillips, left-footed ball forward to Kane's a good one. Kane turns. He's got bodies with him. Five on four in England's favour. Sterling, he's got Walker with him. Sterling goes for goal. Still going, Sterling. Saved by Kasper Schmeichel. 30 minutes has gone. We'll look for stoppage time. 
Either way, it's going to be England's ball here. It is, right. Sterling possibly should have gave it to Trippier on the overlap, but did do well. Got beyond the tired uh, challenge from Anderson, even though he's not been on the pitch that long. And, yeah, the angle was tight in the end. Good save from Schmeichel once again. But England will look to run down the clock, almost certainly keep the ball in the, in the corner area from this set piece, and they, they should be just about over the line. Yes, sir. Uh I imagine they will keep it in the corner, like you say, Tom. Still to see how long has been added on. We've got one minute is. That was a foul by Poulsen, surely, on Foden. Uh, no play on as uh, Mailer. Denmark need to go long. Mailer can't get it out of his feet. Fouled, I think he was, by Trippier. But play on. Anderson going forward. It's Brathwaite now. Tries to run past Shaw. Shaw gets his body in the way. And uh, what well, advantage being played? I thought he'd given a foul against Shaw then as Maguire feeds it to Foden. Foden into the feet of Harry Maguire. All eyes on the Dutch referee. And it's called time. England have scraped through. Harry Kane falling up from a penalty save by Kasper Schmeichel has made the difference. England will play Italy in Sunday's final at Euro 2020. After extra time, it's finished England 2, Denmark 1. Our next football commentary match is getting ever nearer, so why not take the opportunity of having a bet on the match? Whether you're interested in betting on the match result, the first player to score, the last scorer, correct score, double result, total goals market, handicap betting, or any other of our exciting markets, it's fun to be involved. Don't forget, when the match kicks off, you can sit back and enjoy superb independent studio commentary while also enjoying our in-play betting opportunities. Good luck! Our next football commentary match is getting ever nearer, so why not take the opportunity of having a bet on the match? Whether you're interested in betting on the match result, the first player to score, the last scorer, correct score, double result, total goals market, handicap betting, or any other of our exciting markets, it's fun to be involved. Don't forget, when the match kicks off, you can sit back and enjoy superb independent studio commentary, while also enjoying our in-play betting opportunities. Good luck! Our next football commentary match is getting ever nearer, so why not take the opportunity of having a bet on the match? Whether you're interested in betting on the match result, the first player to score, the last scorer, correct score, double result, total goals market, handicap betting, or any other of our exciting markets, it's fun to be involved. Don't forget, when the match kicks off, you can sit back and enjoy superb independent studio commentary, while also enjoying our in-play betting opportunities. Good luck! Our next football commentary match is getting ever nearer, so why not take the opportunity of having a bet on the match? Whether you're interested in betting on the match result, the first player to score, the last scorer, correct score, double result, total goals market, handicap betting, or any other of our exciting markets, it's fun to be involved. Don't forget, when the match kicks off, you can sit back and enjoy superb independent studio commentary, while also enjoying our in-play betting opportunities. Good luck! Our next football commentary match is getting ever nearer, so why not take the opportunity of having a bet on the match? Whether you're interested in betting on the match result, the first player to score, the last scorer, correct score, double result, total goals market, handicap betting, or any other of our exciting markets, it's fun to be involved. Don't forget, when the match kicks off, you can sit back and enjoy superb independent studio commentary, while also enjoying our in-play betting opportunities. Good luck!
Our next football commentary match is getting ever nearer, so why not take the opportunity of having a bet on the match? Whether you're interested in betting on the match result, the first player to score, the last scorer, correct score, double result, total goals market, handicap betting, or any other of our exciting markets, it's...